today we have uh, Eduardo Gavotti. He's a Venezuelan economist from the Universidad Central de Venezuela with a master's in international finance and banking from London Metropolitan University. He's also a financial services professional, investment firms, asset management, financial regulation, retail tra trading and fintech. He's also managing partner at his own proprietary investment and financial guidance company. He's a business advisors for a number of companies in the UK. He's a co-creator and co-host of the podcast Trading and Serio. And he's a football and rock music aficionado and a major crypto aficionado as well. So I'm very, very happy to have Ed here. Yo, bro, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for that kind introduction, Leo. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm great. Yeah, I'm very happy here in Moscow as usual, uh, keeping it uh, moving. As I was telling you off air, making decisions that affect the future of my company. Uh, because I mean, I, I just I may be overreacting, but uh, I just feel that we are facing the financial event of our generation and and that uh, um, I'm pretty sure that there will be a lot of wealth that will be destroyed. Uh, and that's why I wanted to invite you here so we can just have a chat. You know, there are a lot of friends and people, I mean, and, and commentators on the subject who are just uh, talking very big words about what's going on. And I kind of wanted to grab like a friend on the, like we say in Spanish, to tu a tu, like from just like in a very... Uh, yeah, you know, re relaxed fashion and, and and just have a conversation about how a person who is thinking about this every day is seeing the future. So, so as a as an introduction to where we're gonna go, I just want to share some thoughts that are running through my mind. You know, we are in a situation where there's 30 million people unemployed in the USA. It's very hard to even imagine that number. Uh, probably this is one of the biggest crises since the 1930s. This is definitely unprecedented time. I was listening to um, uh, one of the leaders in the investment group, Marco Global Investments, uh, uh, Ray Dalio. He was uh, calculating that something like 20 trillion dollars of losses are going to be redistributed uh, yeah. <laughs> in the upcoming months and. Uh, and well, I mean, the question is kind of where all this money is going to go or where the, this money is not going to arrive. And uh, there will be a giant restructuring of the debts, debt market in general. I mean, which means like definitely a lot of people are going to say, hey, dude, I cannot pay you my what I owe you. So what, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? And you're going to just put me a gun in your head. And um, there uh, businesses like hospitals, this is more focused in the USA, but businesses like hospitals could go broke because, I mean, there is this super strange circumstance that we find ourselves that in which people are not even going to the hospital. I mean, in that because they're yeah. afraid of a virus and uh, supply lines will change and uh, there is absolutely no way we're going to return to how it were, where we were before. So when you were sitting at home and uh, to me, it hit me when the, the USA banned travel from America to Europe and then I from Europe to America and then I thought, Wow, like how do you even how do you even do this and what is, what is going to happen? So I don't know. Why don't you take us through your your holy shit moment? What what is, what is going to happen? <laughs> uh, kind of thing and what happened to you and uh, how do you see this like starting? Well, uh, it's, it's funny because I was one of the ones who who and, and I hate to admit it, but that's the true uh, the truth. I I was one of the ones who underestimated the whole thing when it started. I was actually traveling to, to Caracas in uh, so, so the third week of February. I, I was there just to, to visit family and to do some other commitments for a week. And of course, you know, the, the, the whole thing was very big in China, talking about the, the, the coronavirus. And, and I had the opportunity to, to do one of the episodes of the podcast that, I, that I'm running. I did it from Caracas. And one guy, the first question that, that we got was, uh, um, what's your opinion on, on, on the coronavirus and whether it will affect the markets or not? And I was like, you know, uh, let's focus on the on the, on the probabilities on the rather things. than the possibilities. <laughs> As in, you know, can it happen? Of course it can. But I was I was like, yeah, the chances are that it won't because you know this year is is, is a is an electoral year in the U.S. Uh, and and certainly Donald Trump is going to do as much as he can to to not let it fall in, yeah. in the brink of election because obviously it would it would go terribly uh, bad for him if if, if he did that. Um, well, I came back to, to, to London and in March the whole thing blew in my face. 
Uh, but but one thing that, that that surprises people, because of course it's very easy to build a narrative around the, the, the coronavirus. The coronavirus was the trigger, but not the cause. Mm, that's interesting. And 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 this is and this is something that, you know, of course it requires a little bit of digging deeper and understanding what's going on, and uh, and, uh, and and to follow up a little bit where the mar markets have been and and where the economies uh, uh, have have been. Uh, but obviously, once something so big as you know, China stopping uh, yeah. and, and basically uh, and closing altogether, uh, and 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 suspending a, a, any any commerce, any trade with with, with any a, any other country. That was huge, and and that was kind of like the, the drop that that needed for for the for, for the whole glass to to to, to basically uh, rebase. And then, uh, um, why am I saying that? It's because we 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 were coming from a period of of sort of sustained. Uh, uh, growth in the asset prices, but that but that growth was uh, pretty much uh, caused by, by a complete uh, uh, nonsensical monetary stimulus. Okay, because so we, so you're yeah. a guitarist in a band, and it's like okay, and you hear this, or you are yeah. just a painter or something, and you hear this sentence, like you know, uh, the assets were growing rapidly, so that means yeah. something kind of like. If you have a company and you're selling uh, participation to people, it's like, hey guys, I have a recording studio. Um, you can buy a little piece of my recording studio. You know, they're, the the prices of those, uh, uh, how would you call them? Well, assets is the word you want to use, and that's the correct word yeah. to use. The prices of those uh, stocks were just rising. So we were mm -hmm. in a moment of in which the, the markets were feeling like, oh yeah, we're going somewhere. Uh, and then, poof. And also, and what was the second part of what you said? It was because the the, the cause of, of of that growth mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was in the opinion of many economists and myself I include uh, include myself in in, in them that uh, it, it was a pretty much it didn't have much sense in the sense that we were going for mm -hmm. so long that the, the the valuations of those companies were uh, were were very stretched and by that I mean that 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 they they were higher than they were supposed to based on the on the underlying conditions now obviously. In the U.S., particularly, there was, you know, unemployment was very low, and uh, there, the, the, the economy was growing, but less, uh, uh, less so every every year or every quarter. If you see the the, the growth of the economy measured by the GDP, the, the the percentage was was getting smaller. So there were signs of of the whole thing bring to collapse. But what was behind it was basically that from the previous crisis in 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 2008. Yeah. We we actually never uh, came out of it uh, completely, because the, the the remedy for of that that the Federal Reserve and most governments took is basically okay. Let's just basically start printing start printing money, start buying uh, whatever we can buy to actually reflow that, uh, the economy, give uh, credit to uh, to people so that consumption would pick up again. But what happened is that money became extremely cheap, and most companies started taking that money. And, that's, and, and instead of reinvesting in, in say, you know, increasing uh, production, uh, they didn't necessarily do that. So there were a lot of buyback programs. So they were they were buying their, yeah. I want to ask <laughs> a question. I will use this. I think it's better than interrupting you. I will use this. No, no, go for it. <laughs> can can we make this metaphor like imagine a closed system, which is my son and me and my and my son and me inside my own house, and so. Yeah. The, the way I was imagining, like, how can I, how can we metaphorize this so the average person can grasp it quickly? It's like, imagine that there's an economical crisis in my house, and then I start just, uh, I, I get a printer and I start giving money to my son. But the amount of things that are inside the house do not change. Okay. So, and but so, it's the, the, and so yeah, my son has more, and my son, I mean, imagine that there is a relationship between me and my son in which my son buys stuff from me. Right, and so yeah. and so then it's like my son has more bills in his hand, monopoly bills in his hand, and then he was like, "I want to use these bills to do this, this, and that." And I'm like, "Well, but I only have two chairs, so I don't care that you have all that money. I mean, I cannot give it to you." It's that's a good way to understand why printing money is not something that just will magically eradicate the problems. Because everybody who is not in the economical world just thinks that printing money, why not? I mean, just just, just put the money out there, and people have more money, and then things are going to be great. Um, but I would like to, to show with this example of my son inside my house, which is very simple, you know, yeah. wanting to buy something from me. And it's like, well, but I only have two chairs and now you have a lot of paper and that paper loses value because it cannot be converted into something. 
Is this a good way to make yeah, a phrase that, or is it a better one? Uh -huh. more, more or less, because in the, in that example, uh, in your household, and in that example with, between you and your son, there is not a financial economy going on. So it's only so it, it's only like, like the goods that you have at home, and then if you have the, the the printer and you can print some money, but then you need to include some somewhat of a stock market going on there. Uh huh. How can we do uh, that? Let's try to do that. And, and and let's say let's say I don't know. Let's say that that. Uh, you guys have uh, uh, your savings, or, or you have uh, somewhat of. Um, let, let's put it like, like this: like you are uh, allowing your son to to increase his value over time by putting money, not just aside, but like putting it into um, some sort of a family investment trust that, uh -huh. that inflates the more the more you buy uh, into the into the shares that you issue. So that that has nothing to do with what's going on, what what you guys eat, what you guys uh, uh, you know, how, what you wear, or or you know the services that you purchase. It's just that the money is is not. So that there's a disconnect in between the real economy yeah. and the financial economy. You know what? So so yeah. You know what? Inside my company, uh, which is again, it's not it's nothing bombastic. It's just a recording studio. But we this place was a little bit like. Lord of the Flies. Uh, do you remember this book, The Lord of the Flies? Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean that it's like a bunch of kids who are left in an island, and <laughs> and then in a point, I mean everything has gone well, and some of us survived, but <laughs> in a point there was like all this the situation, you know, and and things uh, became more complicated, and and uh, one of the reasons, I mean, I'm I'm seeing because I mean I even I as a person who studied economics struggle to. To, to grasp these concepts in a powerful way and we have time to yeah. sit down and just think about them. So, so and you see, in a point, we e established something which was kind of like a, what we call the virtual salary. We mm -hmm. did this because because we didn't have capacity to pay money to ourselves to do certain tasks, like even simple things, like let's just post on social media. I made this post on social media. This will give me 5,000 rules of virtual salary. And so there was a point where the valuation of this virtual salary became so large that it was comparable to the gear. And so it was not clear what was the real like value of the whole thing. I mean, and that's kind of where the Lord of the Fly situation came to be. Because when you say to people like, yeah, well, but that means that the real economy, there is a disconnect between the real economy and the and the investment side of the economy. The financial economy. Yes. It's real hard for the average person to, to grab this sentence. Do you think that what I just told you, let's recap, like... We made a studio. The studio had a, a guitars, basses, drum kits, and uh, equipment. And then we started awarding to ourselves some kind of virtual value. And then this became some sort of cancer that 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 made a disconnect, as you precisely yeah, said, between yeah. the gear and and so. Is that a good way to put it? That's a very good way to put it because ultimately, you the, the, there was a point where you probably were looking more at, at your virtual salary, yes. what's going on now, yes. and, and and then yes. you forgot completely about what was happening in 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 the things that had real value for the studio in this case. Now, don't get me wrong, the, in in the in the in the economic system that we have today, or that, that and that we've had for the you know since probably ever, or at least since since uh, since uh, Bretton Woods, that's the only way. To, to come out of crisis, unfortunately. Well, there are some other proponents, of course, I said, you know what, whatever gets bust, let it bust. Don't, don't even, don't even uh, mention it. Only the strongest will survive or whoever needs to take the, you know, take the, the, the hit will take it. And, and, and to some extent, I agree with that. But when you, when, when you, when you, when you incorporate the, 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 politi the politic side of it and, uh, and, uh, and, and of course, the, the role of, of uh, the, the central banks uh, in the room to to do otherwise, it's very because it will be very unpopular with with a lot of sectors that ultimately feed into that uh, um, sort of feedback loop between politicians, uh, financiers, uh, uh, voters, etc. So, yeah. so I guess what, what I'm trying to say is that yes, they, they they started in this sort of crazy snowball of of throwing money to 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 the economy to buy everything that was depressed. In the hope that it, w it was going to to give the, the economy some breathing space. This is yeah. post two thousand and eight. This was from two thousand and eight, uh and -huh. it never stopped. So, and 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 that's the thing because it, it was meant to stop at some point. So they were they were they were talking about normalizing it. And just just to give some some context for for people who are not necessarily economists or that don't follow these things. Mm -hmm. So the ways that the central banks uh, have to do this is by 
by what's called the, the, the monetary policy, which is reducing the, the, the cost of money, so the, the interest rate, they, they, they brought it nearly to zero. Let me say something banks, quickly. Let me say yeah, something quickly, it. if I may. The price of money is the interest rate, because if you are a person who is just standing in the street and you have a bill of 10 pounds and you think like, if I put it in the bank, I'll get paid for it. So am I correct to see it like that? Yes, yes, yeah. that's exactly it. Yeah, that's sorry, exactly it. So the, the central oh. bank manipulates the price of money to motivate people to put it in a bank or not? Precisely, precisely. That's one of the tools they have to, to incentivize spending or incentivize uh, saving and, and therefore invest, uh, investing. But this, this uh, interest rate is not directly the one that you get as a, as a consumer when you go to your bank. This is, this is the rate at which banks lend to each other, at which banks enter into, into lending with the, the central bank. Uh, as well, so this is like a major institutional uh, uh, area. It's not, and then of course this this translates into the into the consumer, uh, uh, the in, in mainstream consumer, so to speak. So so what happened is that obviously everything became cheap, and then co uh, corporations and, and banks started doing what? So the free money, basically, I'll take as much as I can, and then what do I do with that money? So okay, I'll I'll buy my own stock, and and it started pushing higher. It wasn't. So this is a very simplistic way to put it, but that yeah. that, that was what, what effectively happened, and and therefore because the rest of the indicators did not pick up in the way that they expected, so they, they were trying to generate a little bit of, of of inflation in the sense that they needed people to consume, they consu to consume a lot, so that there was a so, sort of like a healthy level of inflation, uh, uh, and that didn't happen. And because that didn't happen, they were never. Uh, uh, in the in, in the situation, or they, they never got to the point where they could normalize that that uh, or revert that monetary policy. Yeah, go on. a question. Um, I mean, when I hear like banks get free money, I'm really not in the narrative of the left of like of like banks are assholes, and uh, I'm really not, absolutely not in that. I mean, banks are wonderful institutions which can get corrupted, like like most institutions can get corrupted. But I, I'm not asking the question at all on the on that. On that context uh, the context is like when i hear that somebody gets free money i'm like hey i want some free money too why why, <laughs> why i don't get it i mean i mean this sounds like like crooked but i i really think it isn't can you tell me why are you okay with that it's like you hear free money banks got free money are you okay with that i mean because, because should it's we not be a okay? gift uh -huh. so, so when i when i when, and, and it's a good it's a good point that you mentioned because by saying that i may sound like i am against banks or anything i'm not I know. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm as capitalist as, 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 as you get, and, and believe me, I was very leftist, leftist Same here. In, the, in, in the past. So, so uh, it's not that they got a gift. It's not like, here's money for you, go and buy something nice. It's, so so the, the relationship between the, 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 the money creation and banks are the, the, the transmission, uh, uh, the, the channel of transmission between the, the monetary policy from the central banks and the real economy. Or the, the consumers, uh, enterprises, etc. So, so it would be like, like I mean, when, because I mean, I really one of my goals of this interview is to to give to some of my friends and people I love and people I know some kind of understanding of some of these concepts. So, so when they hear like the process of money creation, I mean, uh, what it happens is, please correct me if I'm wrong. What it happens is that uh, a bank comes to a central, the, the, I mean, the central bank emits and not and not a news like in their secret Facebook, secret central bank Facebook, like. Hey guys, uh, there is all this money here. It has this interest rate. Who wants to take it? And then uh, uh, the bank of Eduardo Caboti says, "Okay, I, I want to take this money, uh, so I can give it as a loan to somebody else." And that's how money is created. Am I correct? Uh, yes, in a way, yes. And and then, mm -hmm. but also, it, this comes as as a as a as pretty much as a loan in the sense that not only banks but also uh, other other. Governments they issue debt instrument, instruments. Yes. So in, yes. Ex, in, ex, in exchange, obviously, this is a, a, a sort of a repayment agreement that you give me money today, and in five years' time, I will pay you whatever. Again, for so, the oh, layman, oh, sorry, for the layman, that means that the bank, the, the government gives you a paper which is like, thank you for your four billion dollars. I will return, or let's put it more simple, thank you for your thousand dollars. I will return you a thousand four hundred in ten years, and that's a correct. way for governments just to because let's say you're the Venezuelan government and you're like. Oh no! I I don't have any money to pay to hospitals right now. Let's uh, I'll go to London and stand on a park in London and say, "Hey guys, I'm the Venezuelan government. Here is a piece of paper. If you give me one thousand four hundred dollars, uh, I'm gonna return you two thousand in the future. Something like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's a but second way as money is created. Am I, because then no, it's, it's, no? Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's the same. So, so again, the central bank issues the 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 the, the money in, in exchange of debt. So that that's that's so obviously that that money is meant to be repaid at, at some point or at by, least by by the bank of Eduardo Gaboti who took that loan. Yeah. And, and when I hear something like because I especially now you hear it all over the time like there are negative interest rates. So, am I correct? I, I have heard this right. Like the bank. There, there. So the not everywhere, but it has happened. So, for instance, in in, in Switzerland, in, in Germany, so that the, the, there was a point where there were negative interest rates, and and yes, this may sound uh, absolutely crazy, but it's also again, it's it's, a, it's an extreme measure from from uh, from the central bank to to incentivize uh, uh, again what so to achieve their monetary policy objectives, and 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 it's it's crazy because obviously it, it's you would not imagine that you would actually get paid to take a loan. Yeah. Yet it, it, it can absolutely happen. Well, a, a good way to see it even, is like... Even, 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 worse, even worse, I mean, even oil got... got exactly, uh, I was going negative. there. That's yeah. a really good... Because, I mean, I didn't know, by the way, even though I come from an oil country, I really had no idea that oil has an expiry date. I just thought you can just leave it there and and forever. And, and Okay, that... no, but, but the, the thing is, is that... The, the, this is what what people need to understand is that it's not the the actual spot price. And by spot price is that if you go to the let's put it in in a simplistic term to the store and buy a barrel of oil, it is it, not that it has a negative price and they say, hey, I pay you to take it. Yeah. This is this this, this happened in the futures market. Yeah. And yeah. And, and and I'm I'm probably you recall from from university days and and, and whatever that the, there is a futures market that works uh, for basically two purposes. The first purpose is, is for commercial hedging. So if you're a producer, let's say if you if you're a producer of onions, to, to put it simply, and you want to make sure that that you, because you don't know how much you're going to produce in the future, you don't know you don't know how much the uh, how big the, the demand is going to be, or whether there's going to be any problems. So you can you can enter into the futures market to secure some operations, so that so that in, so you have a smoother path uh, towards the the, the future. Uh, the future market exists because let's say if I am a restaurant and I and I know that in three months I'm going to need a thousand onions, I yeah. will put an order of uh, July. You know, like, hey man, and if you don't comply with that onion, I can take you to a court. And if you don't give me those yeah. thousand onions, like, okay. So same happens with oil. It's like I am right. I am a refinery and I will buy oil in the future. So what happened is that right now, the, I mean, think about it. It's just like when people are trying to piece the economy together, I think the most smart thing to do is to start by you as a consumer. I haven't put gasoline in my car, man, in the last two months. This is real. I put gasoline once. <laughs> I have not put gasoline. I mean, I used to put gasoline every two days. And so yeah. that's me. And then the whole market is doing the same. Yeah. And so that means that, that that uh, there is a gasoline station that will not buy gasoline in July because they already have so too much. So the prices of gasoline in July, which is like the onions in the future, just yeah. become negative. But but what you're trying to remind to everybody is like it's not that the price of oil now became negative or it's the futures, the one that became negative. Correct. So the contract that expired in May was the one who be that became negative because obviously demand was dead. No one was consuming uh, oil whatsoever. There was there was no production of anything, uh, and 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 the futures uh, uh, that expire in, in any day can become like a, a whole potato. So so in the financial markets they start exchanging these contracts because you you're not interested not so much to to you know if you're if you're a, if you're a financial services professional or investor or whatever you're not interested in receiving the the, the five million barrels of oil in your house. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, or whatever. And if you are the last one uh, to take that contract I upon see. expiry, they will call you and say, hey, sir, where do you want these 5 million barrels? Because well, okay, so, but... I see the point is that there are also people in the middle uh, that that are not the ones who are actually going to use that oil. Yeah. And so they're like, so, so, it's like, the, like you have, we have this hot potato game. Like, yeah, it's correct. Like... So, so it, it's tradable. <laughs> the, 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 that, but that's that's a good thing because it creates liquidity. So, so it, 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 it well, it's a, it's a good thing until it's not, because obviously you know when 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 the markets are functioning, let's say you know, on an orderly way, in 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 sort of normal circumstances, then obviously the, the, the to have a lot of liquidity is good, because it means that the transaction costs are, are low, that you can e easily participate and 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 sort of 
move uh, orders from one place to the other, and that, that should be fine. But obviously, with, uh, with all the stress that happened in, in the context of, of, of the market collapse and then the, and then the shutdown of the entire uh, economy, then obviously there was no demand for oil. Yeah. And and who, who the hell wanted to be the last one to to get those contracts? So people started saying, "No, I'm selling at this price. No, I'm selling at this one. I'm selling this one." And then, so to recap, to recap for I mean, just to to put the idea there on the table because that was a big headline. So what what happens is kind of like I don't know if in in the English speaking countries there is this hot potato game. I don't know if it exists. We have this game which is the hot potato, and then you pass it around people. You know, you grab a, a piece of rock or something and you start saying singing a song. The hot potato, the hot potato, the hot potato, and whoever gra catches it in the end uh, is the person who loses because I mean you're supposed to pass it quickly, uh, yeah. and so we have a situation in which the hot potato, the object that you pass around, is oil, and the last one who <laughs> keeps that that hot potato is going to receive a bath of oil in their house without not being ready for it. So they end up saying like, "Okay, I was a, I, I am the last one to receive the potato. I will pay you if you take the potato from me," and that's yeah. what the meaning of negative uh, oil prices means and so so piecing the whole thing together because we started saying that i mean i think people have a feeling that i don't know if everybody has a feeling but again i'm judging the market by me which is an absolute it could be an absolute aberration but i'm the only person that i know so so yeah. I, i i as a person who, who i mean that i'm the only person that i occupy the body of so uh i had the perception that the financial crisis of 2008 it's not that it was over but But certainly, I don't think that people have this. Uh, the random people have this this clear understanding that there is a major overlap. That it's kind of like as if there was a hurricane and then a turn. Well, or I don't know if you want to call it that. There was a hurricane and then there was a comet impact. You know, after yeah, the hurricane, yeah. and so yeah. and so this created a, a very unstable circumstance where we see each other, and this adds to the purpose. You see, when I started, that's why I'm doing these conversations. I didn't even have an idea that these two waveforms were resonant and that they pushed each other so so we were already yeah. in a situation where markets were weak and then poof the whole that, global that, economy that, but that's that's the thing markets in 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 paper were not weak so they were they were going all-time highs all the indices and and all, all of the all, all so you could you will see prices going up and up and up so that that's 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 what was kind of like strange for most people to see but what was happening is that again they were not going up because Uh, because everything was entirely healthy, they were going up simply because people kept buying, and that's that's just only the definition of a bubble. That's why you, you hear a lot of market bubbles. I have a feeling that it's just a stupid question that I have had forever. It's like, it, aren't we always going to see all-time highs? I mean, in the end, there is more people. You see what I mean? Like, yeah. In the end, there's more people, so obviously things are just going. It's like. With the coronavirus, um, for example, with the coronavirus number of cases, it's like crises are increasing. It's like, oh yeah, of course. I mean, there's a lot of people. So isn't the same with the markets? It's like, like, of course that the the markets are going to be valued in all time highs now because today there is more economical activity than before. Or actually, and that's maybe a good way for people to understand what the depression means. Sometimes economical activity get destroyed, and so those previous all time highs stop being meaningful anymore and then they be, they there is a they, they shrink and so they eventually give the opportunity for a new all-time high to be reached in the future you see what i mean Where I'm going? yeah and and, and 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 it's true so so it, that, well, actually one of the advice uh, and no, no not necessarily from me i'm not giving advice at this point but but uh for many many uh investment advisors to people is to say that don't despair and 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 if you're invested uh stay invested don't panic unless you actually need it uh, mm -hmm. because History has told us that after every big crisis, then when things resume, then we 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 end up higher than we were before, because the all, the thing is that there are boom and bust uh, cycles that you you will not be able to prevent. You can you can only prolong them or, or shorten them, uh, and you can see now actually that they are trying as best as they can to to bring things uh, back to normal again, even with the with the whole situation, both of the coronavirus. And and now of uh, of the indicators like employment and so on, uh, not being uh, completely uh, healthy, they are trying as much as they can to keep uh, to, to bring prices uh, of assets where they were. Uh, who who but, is but trying? The central banks. Central banks, yes, and and also governments via fiscal policy. Why the they want policy. that? Why they want? I mean, it's obvious to you maybe, but maybe not for everybody. Why they want the, those prices to keep good raising? 
So it, it's it's basically because the the, the the stock market, or not not just the stock market, but in general e economic activity, is is, suppo is let me put it this way. In order to generate more more wealth, and and by wealth uh, to the general economy, more growth, and so that you can have more pros prosperous society under a capitalist system, you need uh, you need you need companies to you know again create that wealth. You need you need uh, all the institutions to be to be able to to enjoy from the incentives of actually producing more. Otherwise, if they if if the intention of the government was you know what let it burn then it will be a clear signal that you don't have that lender of last resort. And, and it will be a very complicated uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, landscape for companies to, to do business. I guess that I can add, I can help to build the more, the more transparent picture to the average person, which is not an economist, which, which uh, again, let's stay in the case of my recording studio. Um, I, and, and I want to connect with a parallel idea. The idea is that I once heard this... Um, this sentence because i'm also interested in this is a super segue but i'm also interested in the topic of of abortion and i was just hearing one person saying this idea which was like one of the motivations of the government is to secure the procreation of the next generation poof and it's it's a fact i mean it's obvious that governments this has nothing to do with abortion this has just to do with the fact of why governments care that there should be more money tomorrow because there is going to be more people and then you are a, a, a business like my studio and then there are a whole bunch of investors and then they are going to decide if they're going to throw me some money or not. And mm -hmm. so these indicators tell to those investors that that the, there is a very high possibility that the money they will give to me will be returned in the future. So then the government, as it is in charge of securing the <laughs> procreation of the next generation, uh, then the government, uh, in a metaphorical way, the government is also in, uh, interested in that money arriving to me, so I can feel yes. me as a, as a businessman, and and the investors yes. will not give me that money if those indicators are bad, and that's why I find absolutely stupid when you see like these uh, messages right now online, which is like, yeah. Wall Street is just loading itself with cash with the all-time highs while everybody's suffering. It's like, man, like. The, what people fail to understand is that again, if I'm the business owner, I'm just owned a studio. That the likelihood of that money coming to me increases the better those indicators are. It's not like it's it's very funny. People have this, people people. I mean, people don't. When I say people, I mean here we're talking about left leaning types. You know, uh, people yeah. have an idea that a everybody has a box of cash there with that they're not using. You know, and yeah. until you're a business owner and then the economy stops, you're and you're like, man, I didn't even had money for three weeks ahead. That's the first point. Second point that they imagine is that somebody is, I mean, somebody is kind of, I mean, when you see the number of the, of the, um, uh, uh, sorry for a second, it just slipped my mind, the indicator of um, uh, Dow Jones, for example, as if that yeah. money is owned, that that number is owned by somebody. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no, dumb, like that money is just an average of, of the performance of 500 companies in the case of Standard mm. & Poor. It's an index. It's an index. And so the only thing that it says is like, well, there are two recording studios in the whole world, in the whole Russia, let's say, and uh, those two recording studios reported profit. So investing in recording studios is a good idea. Hey, Mr. Yeah. Capitalist, who have your money deposited in a bank, gaining interest, why don't you take that money and give it to somebody else that, who runs a recording studio and then you will, that person who has a son will get more money and will be able to expand. And But, but then you have a problem. Poof, the demand crashes, which means that all of a sudden the government closes, closes everybody down. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think it's really, I mean, because what, I don't know if uh, for anybody listening, I don't know if any of you have experienced uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, like an environmental catastrophe, like an earthquake or something. But then there is a situation when everybody stops buying and, and also and companies are don't have the capacity to produce. And so at the same time, we have it. But the problem is that all of a sudden we have it in the whole planet Earth in one snap of a finger. Yeah. So it seems pretty scary to me. And he, he, and I think that, I mean, one of the things I would like my listeners to obtain from this uh, podcast is some sort of, well, I mean, warning that, that this is certainly not some moment to just ignore and to take uh, lightly. I mean, this is a global earthquake that has never happened before. Is this a correct interpretation? And how do you see that? 
Uh, it's correct. Uh, never before we've had the combination of a global pandemic and uh, and uh, and the financial uh, stress situation like this one. Uh, and 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 hence why it's very easy to build a narrative that oh, you know, it was only the coronavirus. No, I mean it's it's it's, it's both, and both are, are running in parallel. And there, there's even more things that that that, that are very worrying for, for the coming days. And I, but before I get into in, into those. You know, I may have sound like, sounded like someone that is, oh, all pro banks and all pro big corporations taking money because it's good that they reinvest and so on. But, but it, it needs to be said as well that, that there is a lot of irresponsibility from many uh, big corporates that haven't done uh, a very good job and are seeking uh, bailouts from money that actually essentially belongs to the taxpayers. So it should be the money that should be used for for their instances. Of course, this is like an unprecedented situation, and, it's in, and to put it in the, in the in the in the context of like you said, a household. Imagine that that you've been saving for you know for your your kid's next holiday. He wanted to go uh, I don't know to to see uh, Manchester United at Old Trafford, and you've been saving for that. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, uh, his his sister broke his uh, broke her leg, uh, you know, riding a bicycle. So you know, we need to take this money because she broke her leg. But but what happened is that her sister was completely you know irresponsible in the sense that she went riding about without protection. She but yeah. you know it, it's her sister. It's not someone. And that also and also for the family. She, and also she stole her brother's bike. I mean it was, it was like yeah. So so, that, so so there's a lot of things. And so and this is a very good example because then you would you would see that some people would say you know what f her sister yeah because she doesn't deserve it. But then you would have the other side. It's like no you know her sister is important. You believe in family. You believe in these things. But but you know, taking the the, the the sort of like the funny example aside, companies are not are, are no one's sister. So the, but but yes, they employ people, and 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 then again, there's there's if you dig deeper, there's a lot of things because are these employees being treated correctly? Is this just money that will end up in the bonuses of the executives? So for instance, Lufthansa in Germany are, are just discussing a bailout from from the government, mm -hmm. and and the conditions from the German government is that okay, uh, Mr. Lufthansa. So what's going to happen is that you will suspend any dividend payouts at the moment because we're not going to give you money so that you distribute to your shareholders, and uh, you will suspend any any other executive bonuses because it just doesn't make sense that you know we're going to use taxpayers' money to bail you yeah. out because you're you're a failed business. So okay, we, we can rescue you. So it's actually it's not the government uh, rescuing; it's the people, it's taxpayers' money, rescuing uh, this company. And then obviously there are some conditions. So that I think is, is is fair to an extent. But there are some of the companies that I do believe they should simply go bust. Uh huh. Like wh which which could be? I wanted to ask. Uh, well, I, I had two questions first before we leave Lufthansa. Did Lufthansa fail? Does Lufthansa fail because of bad management or because of the coronavirus? Uh, I believe it's a bit of both. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that that, that it's uh, completely badly managed. And airlines in, in, in particular are, are a very difficult business because, you know, all businesses yeah. operate based on the margins that they do. Um, but, but obviously, you know, with, with most companies, and I, I haven't, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to look into the specifics of, of, of Lufthansa's yeah, financial sure. health and uh, so on, but, but, but in general, uh, uh, when you see that most companies have used part of the money that they should have uh, saved or, or in a way kept aside for a rainy day like this one and they have used it for other purposes again you know like to, to disproportionately uh -huh. pay investors and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and executives especially then obviously when this time comes a business that is so uh, susceptible of, of, of being bankrupt because of a situation like this, that it's like an insurance company. You would say, well, you know, how many coronavirus can, uh, coronaviruses can we can we get uh, in our lifetime? But that's the point. You just don't know. That's the point of risk. But uh, because you don't know, then you should have always something on the side to prevent it. I have a question uh, for the people who who have not a, a instruction in economics. Uh, what? How do you call? Uh, sorry, I need to use a word in Spanish that I know it only in Spanish, and you can translate it for me. How do you call encajes bancarios? That's the fractional reserve banking. Okay, so so for people who don't know how it works, when you make a because a bank is a is a business in which uh, you're playing with a lot of people's money. So uh, when you're gonna set up a bank, there is this law which is like you come to the government. Hi, I'm Leo Perez. I want to make a bank, and the government is like, well, okay, great. Uh, every time a person gives you a hundred pounds, you're gonna have to give me ten pounds, and I'm gonna put it in a ca in a safe here in case you go bust. 
So um, that gives some sort of insurance that you can handle people's money. And in case you go bust, I have at least a fraction of that money. Wouldn't it, I, without wanting to be absolutely no in, in the realms of like extreme socialist policies, like wouldn't it be logical to make some sort of fractional reserve banking after a certain size of company? If you understand what I mean, like, okay, Lufthansa, you're valued in $4 billion. Your, your fault would be catastrophic. So from now on, uh, let's take a chunk of your income and just put it here in a, ca in a cushion in case a future coronavirus comes in. The thing is that there's no regulator of airlines in that sense, yeah. uh, like, like with banks, and and and, 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 and that, would, that would distort the whole... The whole but, uh, but I, but I, you, I get your point. I get your point, but you know, one of the things that made me swap from... I mean, one of the consequences of me swapping from the left towards more center-right vision of everything is that one day I, I felt like I just took the metro somewhere and I was like, wait, I didn't build this metro. Like, I'm using a market. Like, my clients are coming to me via this metro, which I didn't build. So so wouldn't it be arguable that... Uh, I mean, I understand that this is super tricky because what people don't understand as well when they start trumpeting uh, policies like the one I'm just saying is that, aha, but where do you put the line? I mean, and who decides that? And that's why the more alone you leave the market, the better. But, but um, I don't even want to put it as a bot. Uh, because I really don't have an alternative that seems to be viable. What are we going to do about that? We're just going to say, well, the bailouts uh, are the only option we have, or in your circles, are there conversations about other alternatives of what you can do to to force companies to have a coronavirus fund for the future coronavirus fund? There's nothing can, we can do. But, but, but look, most companies, they can go to the market and, and, and get a loan themselves. I mean, it's a, it, they, they don't necessarily... Obviously, the size of these things... Are and so, the, large, yeah. uh, are so large that, that you know it can be difficult to get funding for it, but 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 in essence, you know, especially in this environment, the you know some companies should be uh, able to if they really have a sustainable business or or, a, or or if they really believe that they have done very good management, for sure there will be investors that will be willing to to put some money uh, on. Now, yes, bailouts are, are, are obviously countries and governments have uh, uh, an incentive and have an intention of. Of minimizing the the contagion of a major business falling, because you know, in the case of Lufthansa, how many people do they employ? They are probably like the the, the signature airline of uh, Germany, so it's a bit like you know Deutsche Bank uh, is kind of like the same thing. So so letting those sort of uh, symbol companies go away is is a is a major sign of weakness of the sort of the German uh, Republic. And apart from the cultural implications, I mean. I find it very stupid, uh, and you know, I was the person who was standing in in the in bank when the Occupy London movement was happening, you know, and I was super active in all these things, like yeah. fuck all these corporations and bailouts and stuff. And then when the moment arrived like this, I I voluntarily say something like, of course I, I mean, I employ like five people. I mean, I can recognize the difference between my contribution to society versus the airline that employs 10,000 people. And it's it's absolutely stupid to say that they only get a bailout because they are corrupt. I mean, yeah. they are also employing, and that's the thing that uh, people, again, a bit left-leaning, fail to understand is that, I mean, for example, you know a, a, st a statistic that blew my mind? You know that famous 1%? Well, they pay something like 40% of the income tax in the USA. So, yeah, yeah the 1%, the 1%. It's like, but the 1% are the ones who are holding the whole economy together. And how much how much, uh, how much, much uh, jobs do you, Mr. Standing on uh, uh, Occupy London protest, how many jobs do you create? I mean, and Lufthansa creates hundred, who knows how many thousands of jobs. And not only that, imagine the guy in, in, in Aruba who drives a little... Uh, a little um, golf cart moving some some uh, luggage, you know, for Lufthansa. I mean, it's just a gigantic thing, and it's natural that these companies are gonna uh, be the first in the line for obtaining a bailout. And there is nothing really corrupt about that. It's just like something that really affects me when I about this transition that I have been through, and and I know that many people may have gone through this transition is to see how much behind this uh, kind of conversations in between the general public. And the corporations there is there of not understanding nor giving to yourself your correct position in society. How many jobs do you create? Zero. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, <laughs> so. Yeah, that, that, and, and that's not to say that like you know you are not important uh, and you should go. No, to, you of know, course. Mars. But 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 obviously you know it is it, understanding uh, things and putting them into perspective. So so long story short for for, for that part, I would say 
yes, you know, we, the governments are there uh, to bail the good companies. And, 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 and of course, that there are to, to see the consequences beyond what a normal person can see, because they need to secure something uh, for, uh, for, the, for the future of the economy. Exactly. Now, but there are com the companies that are irresponsible, that, that because they are terrible managers, they have a, they have a shitty business. And so, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Ah, say man, yeah, not, yeah. This, is, this is super relaxed space. Yeah. Okay, so we can cross. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the companies that have a terrible business uh, uh, going on, you know, why would they, uh, why would they be bailed if they, if they, if they cost more harm than, than what, than what they, than, one, than the good that they may create? Do you so, have an example so, you know, of a company that you feel that if you may? Well, uh, I, again, I cannot dive into the specifics because I, I would be responsible if I say uh -huh. that I have looked See. at it in, in detail, but I have read a lot of comments about Virgin, for instance. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. yeah. We, we all know uh, uh, Sir Richard Branson. He, the guy is, is, is a billionaire, and, and, and kudos to him. He, he's probably done wonderfully well. He's, he's actually sure. took a lot of risk, and he's, put, and he's built an empire himself. But then, you know, he's... he's he, he, probably himself, he can support most of the businesses that are struggling from from his side, uh, and 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 some of them are, are not even public companies, so meaning that they don't they don't they, they are not listed in the in, in the in the stock exchange, so you know uh, and and I, and I don't know maybe you know if anyone knows him uh, and and is and is listening or, or or watching this 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 interview, I mean maybe he has done far more than what those comments on Twitter or or on the media. Yeah. Sure, sure. are saying about him so hence why it will be responsible for me to say it but th there are certainly cases in the past of, of things that have ba been bailed that that probably shouldn't have in spain for instance the, mm -hmm. the banking se sector was was very very largely criticized because of the way uh they, they took part in the, in the in the in the crisis and and they were, they were basically you know repossessing the homes without any which which again it, there's, there's a lot of narrative between left and right there, and Spain in particular is very polarized in, the, in, in, in that matter. Yeah. But it's like yeah. you don't probably don't need to bail every single bank because because not all of them have done a very good job. And when we when, again when we speak about banks, people refer, it's like oh, Mr. Bank is like one <laughs> a, a singular entity that they all think the same. No, there there are people there as well who have families who have you know who have done a lot of of great things, who have invested, take risks, uh, and employ people, and so on. So, so there are there are banks and there are bankers, and and within the bankers there are the good ones and there are the shit ones. So, so uh, unfortunately, the, 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 there are at times a lot of conflict of interest, which is what where where, where things go go completely wrong. Con why conflict? Because you know I'm getting money from this government because I supported their campaign, or because I will support their next one, or and and this is where things perverts, and 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 these are the things that I believe they should they should happen. Do, are you afraid uh, of um, government power growing too large because of the crisis where we are? I mean, like, from some things terrify me. I mean, in terms of uh, tracking uh, citizens moving around, and I mean, and I saw that in the UK they are using, they are starting to to install it, this app, a Nile of White, just as a test, you know, to. So my this question comes twofold. You know, we have the political slash liberty freedom realm, and then we have the economical realm, like. Do you uh, do you think that this could be an opportunity for for big government narrative uh, individuals to push a you know an even larger intervention of the state in the economy? Um, I, I tend to stay away from 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 conspiracy theories, even though I like them, because yeah. they, they, if they if they are true, they present huge opportunities on the one side and on the other, because you know it, it you you would be stupid not to pay attention to some of those, but. But uh, I tend to stay away in the sense that I, I, I am not concerned because there's very little I can do right now and there's too much uh, I have to worry about. I'm talking <laughs> on a very individualistic yeah, that's uh, okay, that's okay. level. I, I, I've got too, too many stuff to worry about to, to then incorporate that into my bag of worriness, so, yeah. so to speak. Uh, uh, you know, Facebook is already... Uh, uh, <laughs> You know they have a they have a major surveillance state all around us. I, yeah. You know if you if you use Instagram and you speak to your wife and you know my back hurts, and then all of a sudden you have an ad of of something for your back. So so you're you're being listened and watched twenty four seven. You just don't know it, yeah. or if you know it, you know what can you do about it? So okay, you can switch off and you can probably go and live in the mountains. So I would do it happily if I have the means to do it, uh, and if my family agreed with me. <laughs> but uh, but you know uh, look I, I I do believe. Uh, unfortunately, not all governments are the same, but I, I'd like to think 
that most uh, governments uh, are trying to, especially in this situation, to do what's best for, for, for their citizens. Um, yes, the, you know, there's a very thin line that can be crossed and they, they can get corrupted. And, and, you know, especially where we come from, the, that's one government that I well, completely yeah. don't. don't uh, but, that, but that's like the, the major exception to the rule. That's a criminal uh, group running a country like that. So they exactly. They, they, yeah. they, they, are not, they, they don't even deserve to, to be called themselves a government. But, you know, they are. So, 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 because they are the ones who, who, who call the shots. Now, am I concerned? No. Can, can it happen? Yes, by all means. I mean, uh, you, if you look in China, uh, what, what they, they've been doing over the years, and right now they were saying, like, you know, I was reading an article like Disneyland in, in Shanghai is going to reopen, but before you come in, you need to show in your app, you know, your, the status of your health. And, you know, they, they, they are probably going to, to, to monitor this, uh, uh, the, the, the good citizen and the bad citizen somehow. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that they, I don't believe the thing that they created coronavirus so that they could, you know, push this agenda. I just think it just came, it went, went out of hands and, uh, and we are in this situation where we right now need to contain it. But, we, you know, life is too short. We, we, we live too short to, to, to worry about whether we're going to be monitored. That will not affect in any way how you behave as a, as a person. If you're a good citizen, if you're a good person, you know, it's like, why do you care if they're, if they're watching? Yeah, of course. If they, if they, if there's some transgression of your of your uh, liberties, because if you're not doing anything, then someone comes in and tries to, you know, break your life. Then, I, then I do understand. But uh, I, I don't know. At least from and where in the, I'm in sitting. The, in the economical side, because I mean, what what people, uh, what pe this is a major governmental intervention in the economy. But I guess I have even seen the libertarians uh, like Ben Shapiro, which is a pretty, for example, is a pretty super free market. Uh, proponent, I've been saying, like, well, yeah, I understand that this is a moment when the government must intervene. Um, let's just hope that that this intervention is temporary and, and I mean, it just moves away quickly so we can all carry on with our lives. But it seems that it seems like this is going to expand government in a way that, well, it's not going to be reversible so easy. Because uh, I expect this, I would like, love to hear your opinion about this. I expect this recovery to go for. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't even want to say a number, but it doesn't seem to be something that is going to be sorted fast. I mean, just like the, the people... By the way, this immediately brings me to a, to an important part of the things that I wanted to discuss with you, which is outside of the economical realm. It's, it's more into the into the sociological and, and the human consequences of this. I have seen a gigantic division between those who have a job and those who don't. I mean, those who... It's a very different narrative. It's like those who have a job and... And, and have a fixed salary and those who don't. And uh, and as a person who runs a business which is like, you know, paid on the moment and there is never like a future commitment of any kind, um, I find myself a little bit uh, perplexed that, that half of the economy calls people like us who wants to go, just go and work, you know, not only once, I mean, who has to. You know, there has been this divide you know, between those who have to work and those who can can afford to stay yeah. at home, and, and which they were kind yeah. of called murderers almost. You know, it's like, dude, but but yeah. who's murdering who? I mean, there are. I, I read a. I think it was a New Scientist uh, article, which was like uh, calling like, man, there there may be something like seventy thousand deaths caused by the lockdown, which are not related to coronavirus, because of the fact that people are just, I mean, either hungry or malnourished or so. Um, I mean, that's when you are from the side of where I am, which is the side of the people who are not receiving a fixed income, then you start thinking, how are we going to recover from this? I mean, without a major governmental intervention in the economy, like, and yeah. that's, that's what's going on. And well, I mean, you know, I want to, for the education of everybody, I want to, I was, um, yes, I mean, in, in Russia, the thing has been a, a really, really, I don't know if to call it strange, uh, circumstances but i mean the people must understand that several things about russia when they're arriving to this podcast this podcast because in a great deal this podcast is about russia and it's about the experience of somebody living here russia is a 130 million 160 million people country with the economy the size of new york city kind of or i think it's, that's that's yeah. impressive yeah. so uh, the mi minimum salary here oh. To do, you know, I, I I actually saw the number for the first time in dollars today because I had only seen seen it in in uh, rubles and the minimum salary here is one hundred and sixty dollars, and so the compensation packet that <laughs> the compensation packet that the package that the government is offering, uh, it's one minimum salary 
uh, let me see it here. Starting, I, I, I pull it out here, like uh, starting from June the 1st, um, people who make less than minimal salary can uh, apply for a payment of, let me find the exact information. Subsidized the state, the state's gonna have paid monthly. I mean, they are giving like tax exemptions and, uh, and I mean, and also, Ah, what they're giving is loans to companies so they can pay minimum salary to the employees, basically. Okay. So, yeah. But if you are an entrepreneur, the only thing you get is, is maybe maybe the possibility of getting a credit or something like that. I really don't take this like like as a personal thing, like, oh, the, con the, the government has abandoned me. I mean, no, it's my responsibility to sort my life out. And it's nobody else's fault that I decided to choose this career or to choose this line of business. Um, but where I'm going with all this mishmash of ideas is that is that none of my friends had any kind of savings, zero of them. And I believe I've seen this, uh, these statistics that 60% uh, of Americans uh, cannot survive a $500 um, catastrophe. The, the American government is going to hand on $2,000 per person for a while. I mean, I think it's for several months. But I cannot imagine what's how this is going to go down in India, in Brazil, in... Yeah. I mean... We're heading, we're heading towards an epoch of incredible stability, instability everywhere. Because yeah. when I mean, one of the things that people overlook is that if things are so peaceful, because we have all our necessities met, but we're heading towards a moment of great scarcity and great uh, nervousness everywhere. And uh, and I think that we all need to build up a, a schema of life in which whenever we can throw a hand to somebody, we have to do that voluntarily. I mean, I've been saying this a lot. Yeah. Anyway, I, I do believe that that uh, human beings, or as human beings, we, we we will need to come up with some, you know, major rethink and rewire of how we how, how we live because and and it will happen in all senses, both in in, in the economic sense and also in in the, in the social and human level, but but it won't come, you know, probably too peacefully or too quiet because so you know, from from the one hand, again coming back to the economic side of things, there will be a lot of or probably a major shift in the way trade happens as in the, the the dependence that that some countries have from from china and then the trust that you know wh how 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 am i going to to do if then all of those uh, goods that i take from china and if something like the coronavirus happens again and then they shut down and then they leave me hanging i mean uh, but but also on the social element you know how can if you go to work in, in, into an office and someone you know sneezes it's like oh i don't know what you have I mean, uh, and, and but and, and and this is kind of like the silly way. But what you're saying is is, is also true because what happens is that it's not just you can you, you can get a grasp by looking at your inner circle probably of, of some friends where you know whether they save, whether they invest, whether they have something for the future, and it, and you'll be surprised the percentage of people across the world that that rely on a pension that after this economic shock, the, their pension was probably wiped out forty percent. Hmm. So so and and it's not that they have. In this have case, very, you mean a, a private? You mean a private fund? Like I mean, a private pension or something? Not not the I mean, because the governments will continue paying. Because uh, I mean, sorry, in Russia, the word pension is like something that the government pays to you. So maybe I'm confused. You mean like, uh, for example, people who has their retirement funds that were crushed by this, or you mean actually pensions paid by the government? Or both. But that, remember that the pensions paid by the government come. They come from where? They come from from the yeah. money that. The previous see, generation paid into 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 the bucket. Ah, so, I see. So, so, so us into the future. Yes. So so there's there's two models actually. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's, something it's, else to worry about. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's either it's, so so. Typically, the money that you're going to receive in the future, it, it will be either the money that you save for yourself from now, so that you can enjoy in the future, or the money that the taxpayer of the future will pay to the system, so that you can get it. Yeah, sure, I get it. Yeah, and and, and unfortunately, again, all it, it, the amount of people that rely on that, and it's funny because even in the UK, you can you can go into your own sort of uh, government uh, website where you declare your taxes and so on, and you can see how much as of today. You know, if if you if you were to retire today, how much would you <laughs> get from from your pension? And it's like and, and it's like you know, 150 pounds per month. Uh -huh. wow. So, 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 so extrapolate that into the future, and and you know it's, it's not pretty. It, it just doesn't look good. So, so uh, unfortunately, the, the the big takeaway from this is is not only again the redefinition and and the and the and the shift in in the economic relations and in the social interactions, 
But also people need to take very seriously that if they're not doing anything right now, and of course, if you don't have a job and not receiving an income, then it's difficult to, to think of that. But you need to, number one, get educated financially. Understand at least the basics of where your money is and, and what is it doing for you. And, and, and then secondly, take some bloody action because, of, because if not, you know, you're relying on something that tends to zero. How can, how can a person who, who has no education on this, um, I mean, I, let, let's, let's try to show to a person the minimum path of action, like, I mean, in the sense that without expecting that a person is going to sit down and engulf like a large literature on this or something, because everybody has a lot of things to do and, and things like that. Um, yeah. Like, for example, I, I imagine that, I imagine that, well, I don't know, by the way, banking here is super advanced. And, and for example, here you can invest from your phone, like, like, really easily i mean relatively easily i mean we bought stocks uh, when all this uh, things were falling i mean in, in a second it was just like at 1 a.m we created the account it was all set up and we and but i mean of course that's a long-term investment but um uh, apart from do in order to invest and to make your money move a little bit and and uh, not just to leave this to fate do you necessarily need a stockbroker can you do it yourself or do you have to contact somebody who does it for you let's start there Let's start. I'm going to try to piece it like how I, what questions I have. So, but but it depends on your profile. So, so it, not not every not everybody uh, can invest directly into like picking the next uh, hot stock and so on. There there are several ways to do it, and you always need an intermediary because again, mm -hmm. right now, the, uh, uh, or, well, there are some what they call peer to peer finance that you can lend money to a company via this uh, technological platform that simply connects the company that wants to, that, that needs money and, and the investors who have it. And then obviously the investor is taking the risk, but there's a asymmetry of information, meaning you don't know if, that, that what the company is telling you they will do, they will effectively do it. Okay, so let's separate this for the layman, because I mean, I really expect that the majority yeah. of people who will see this have no idea of economics. So so let's let's separate this into, we are going to tell you right now a whole bunch of financial instruments. That's how it's called, am I correct? Yes. Financial instruments that you can use. So number one, peer-to-peer -peer lending. That means that there are websites. If you Google this, peer-to-peer -peer lending, you're gonna and we're not gonna recommend anything. It's just like it's just like uh, no, no. Google and, 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 keywords. And, 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 yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and it needs to be said. You know, you need to understand that all, every investment takes uh, it means risk. Yeah, of course. So, that, so that's a, that don't, don't do it with anything that you cannot afford to lose. But, but if you have so, something on the side and it's not doing anything for you, that, that of course there are some, some ways that you can do it. So the peer-to-peer -peer learning again, is, is just, it's just a, like, like a very plain vanilla way of saying it. So you, let's say a pizzeria opens and they want to, to expand to the second restaurant and they go into this, this, this website and they, 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 the, the company that runs the website or the platform does the checks and they say, well, yes, this pizzeria is healthy. You know, we can incorporate it into a system and they are raising, I don't know, 50K, whatever. And then they, they, the investors on the other side, they go and say, well, oh, I like this pizzeria. I like the idea. I, li I eat a lot of pizza. So uh, probably lots of people would think the same. I think it's going to be a success. I'm going okay, to so we have, we have we have peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, great. Uh, what else What else can a person do? Like, okay, we can also, for example, I have, <laughs> I always wanted to invest in pot stocks in the USA. I mean, but I don't know yeah. how to do this. So how theoretically could I do this sitting down in Russia? What, what steps do, if maybe you don't know the answer to this because maybe you don't know the market in the USA, but if there were, be, if the, if there were some pot stocks in the, U, in the UK, how can I get access to that? What you, need to find, you need to find the intermediary, the broker, that will give you access to, to, to put an investment into those stocks, which now it's easier than ever. All, all, all you need is basically to demonstrate that you're a, a human being and, uh, and that you are a legal resident of where you are. And obviously that the, that the company accepts uh, a citizen of the, or a resident of the country where you live. Okay. Uh, and, and, then, and then it's just a matter of, of you know, hitting the buttons of buy and sell whenever you want to. Simplistically put, uh, there are other ways to, to do it. So, you know, from the more simplistic that you just, you know, you don't do any analysis of it. You just see the, the brand that you like and you buy it. Or the, the the far more complex that involves like you know using leverage, which is like you know using money that you don't have, so that you can get a greater exposure to to that market. So and how do you do? The favor. If you don't have this money, where do you get it from? I mean, do you cap capture it from a lot of friends and then you send it to that guy in the UK so he buy pot stocks for you? Or no, but the broker is not a guy. It's it's again it's it's a platform. 
-hmm. It's a platform that they, they, they you ah, do it from the, home. The broker is the one who gets leverage. Money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, no, uh, so, uh, so again, the, the, uh, the leverage thing, which is a bit more complicated, comes via a contract. So it's all paper money. It's not that you receive money in your account and then you, you pay it. You basically say, okay, uh, if you want to invest, I don't know, 10,000 pounds in those uh, pot stocks, you need to deposit a minimum of, I don't know, 2K to put it, to put it around. That took the, those 2,000 pounds are what's called a collateral, collateral or margin, mm -hmm. which means that if the investment go, goes bad, they, the broker will take money from, from that guarantee of 2,000 pounds. I see. But, it, but if it goes well, then obviously the profit that you make will add up to those 2,000 pounds. So this is why some people can say, yeah, I can double up or I can trip, triple my, my money. But you know, people need to be careful because there's a lot of scams in this place, in, in this space. Not necessarily from the broker side, but from the people that offer you like advice or that tell you, you know, you should do it with me, and I will, I will promise you a return. So that, that that's another thing that in this moment of of desperation for so many people, they probably are looking for alternatives to to make a quick money to to recover whatever they lost. And and there's a lot of people spending money on marketing so that they, when you look on yeah. Google, how can I buy? They come on the first uh, place in in your results, and once you click there, you're doomed. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the okay? So to continue laying out the the, the um, instruments that people have. So we said uh, peer to peer lending, uh, uh, and then we said kind of contacting a broker. Let's say that. Let's say that uh, to put this in more practical terms, you are uh, exactly a person like me. You're in Moscow. Uh, how would I get access to a broker? Well, the first thing I would do is to find any friends that I have that went to university who may be related to that and ask to that person, listen, man, I want to invest money in, where are you? I'm in London and that person will point me to a worker. So a, a second financial in, uh, instrument will be buy stocks through a broker. Is this a good Correct. way to, to frame it? Yes, yeah. yes, that's a good way to frame it. Is, is the next uh, financial instrument, and let's stay on the, on the easy side of things, would be precious metals or... Yeah, you could you could through the broker you can buy pretty much uh -huh. anything. So so basically, yeah. the peer to peer lending will be a website that will allow you to do this without a broker necessarily, and then all the rest of things you can do with a broker. Um, yes, you can put it that way. So the peer to peer lending can be done also via a broker, broker because they may yeah. they may be the, the 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 lender to 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 the company, and uh, and and they may act as the company towards you. So they sit in the middle. Or they are just a technology provider where where they just connect the two the two ends, like some uh, websites whereas, where you can invest. Yeah. Whereas 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 with the broker is is they typically are the, they take the two sides. So so again they they go to the market on your behalf on the one on the one hand, or they can they can also say you know what uh, I don't go to the market. I just basically do a contract with you that mirrors whatever happens in the real market. All oh, right, and so they. They don't input their own creativity to it, but they kind of just follow the market's behavior, something like that. Yeah. Did I yeah. understand it right? And 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 then and then the, there are other ways that you know you can get exposure, which is the, the term may sound complicated, but it isn't. Uh, which is which is called exchange traded funds, and and you can you can imagine which is like is that know, another financial year. instrument or that's another financial uh -huh. instrument? Yes. Okay, and the which broker is, can do it for you. Uh -huh. Not not just a broker, but you can also do it uh, yourself via your bank. Some can you banks, repeat the uh, name, please? Exchange traded funds. Okay. So what it means that? So uh, what what that means is imagine uh, I don't know the the Happy Meal from McDonald's. So that the exchange traded funds has uh, a bunch of assets that that typically ah. replicate. Let's say an index. Let's say you want to invest. You don't want to to choose or cherry pick. The, the next uh, hot stocks, you want to get exposure to the whole of the market of the Standard & Poor's. Yes, so that's exactly, that, that what, I yeah. that's exactly so, what I bought. That's exactly what I bought, yeah. And, 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 and you, you basically buy uh, a, a unit or, or a share in, the, in, the, in this, in this uh, fund that replicates whatever the Standard & Poor's do, it will do it in, in your fund. And, and these, they are very cost efficient, so they are not too expensive. And they are very liquid, which means that you can get in and out whenever you want. Yeah, that's now, exactly what I bought. Yeah. Now, on top of that, so there are other companies that say, okay, fine, you can do everything yourself or you can come to us uh, uh, or to them because we uh, 
have the knowledge to build a strategy for you based on your goals. So, so let's say you, you, you are saving because you want your son to go to college or you're saving because you want to you know, uh, get the, the initial down payment for your, for your first home. Uh, and then you, they, they, they input these parameters and they, take, uh, they do an assessment of your risk uh, profile to understand you know, how fearful or greedy are you and, and to what extent can you afford X or Y level of risk. And then they say, fine, we take a combination of those ETFs or those exchange traded funds and put it in a portfolio for you that will, you know, in the long, in the long term can give you uh, the return that you're expecting to, for your objectives. And so, then they, they, yeah. So, I mean, the Happy Meal example is just amazing. It's like you don't know anything about this. You go to a, to a broker or you do this yourself and you say, okay, I want to get this bunch, this little bit, this little bit, this little bit of, of this um, kind of different styles of companies. For example, in the one I bought, we bought like Aeroflot, <laughs> which I guess it was a terrible idea now that in hindsight, I mean, it was inside the package. It was like Aeroflot, uh, Sberbank, uh, I mean, the biggest companies in Russia, something like that. Yeah. And then whatever, let's explain to people, uh, I, I will do it quickly, just what, what are indexes again, it's like, Let's say that there is a, they, you could create any index you want. I mean, there would be the index of recording studios in Moscow. And so this index contains two companies. And if our stocks go up, our index went up. And so that's an indicator again, because people is like, the, the stock exchange is going up. Somebody's stealing all that money. It's like, no, that just serves <laughs> as an indicator. But the, the easiest way to, to explain an index to people is with inflation. So most people are familiar with inflation. Inflation is an index in itself. Yeah. If you hear that inflation is 2%, it doesn't mean that everything is rising 2%. Exactly. Inflation has the, the, the prices of, of property, the prices of, of petrol, the prices of, you know, tomato, whatever, whatever you want to put it. So food, the health, healthcare system, everything is in there. And combined, the average is, is 2%. And that, that 2% moves, it can go to 3%, it can go to 1%, it can go to minus, etc. So, so it, it's, it's exactly the same thing. When you said that, when you said that, when I buy this Happy Meal of uh, financial package, will follow what the index does. It means that if the index goes to minus, it will sell some of my stocks quickly to make sure that I don't lose money. Or did I understood that wrong? No, that 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 will only happen if uh, if you have an advisor uh, doing it for you. Mm -hmm. So if if the if the index go, goes negative, which it, it hasn't happened, but but that doesn't mean that it can. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously you would be exposed to whatever the index does. So and, when and I hear, as you said, you can you can, you can build in you, you can you can invest in, into different index, not just the, the ones that, that you typically see on the news. You can you can look for different indices. That, for instance, some of them that would look like the next uh, you know the, the classic the, 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 the like you mentioned the pot stocks. So maybe there is there is an ETF of companies in the marijuana sector. What in, is ETF? In the ETF is the exchange traded fund. Ah, that's, that's, uh -huh, that's, right. that's the instrument that, that replicates the index. Yeah. Ah, so it will it will replicate the index of pot companies in yeah. the U in, in in a certain market or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, do you think it's a good investment to <laughs> to invest in pot pot stocks or you have? I, no I idea think it was. I think it was, and I didn't do it. Uh, I don't know why because uh, I, I'm not too familiar with what's going on. But but obviously there's a huge market and it's a huge demand. And it just appeared out of nowhere. It's like. Uh, it's because you know it's a market that, that was formalized in, in, in some parts, and obviously it was expected for it to do very well. But then, then will it continue to do very well in the future? Maybe, uh, uh, and it's purely based because once it's formalized, then it depends from, from a lot of, of situations. So, so will it will it behave like a commodity in the sense that because you know, ultimately you're growing a plant, and it will be affected by seasonal factors. It will be affected by you know plagues or a number of things and, yeah. and it depends on on and by, by no means I, I i i'm not i'm no expert so so but, but you know it's, it's it's like uh again by being a, a new asset class so to speak uh, uh it presents interesting opportunities now will i invest all my money into it no because you know i believe in diversification and that but i do believe that if you have uh, an edge or, or or a passion for it and you can investigate a little bit for it then it, chances are that you will probably have a, a, a very good reason to invest in, in things that you like. Actually, actually, I, I am quite passionate of that plant in general, and I, I share with you my, my global domination uh, 
uh, imagination about what can be done with this in Russia. The, and I'm, I'm giving here away billions of dollars in an idea. I'm sure some some rich guy is going to hear this and just going to totally front run me there. But anyways, I don't see this in the foreseeable <laughs> future. So in Russia, the the business of um, I don't know how do you even to say it in English, man. Ah, a hemp. Yeah, it came back to my mind. Hemp. Uh, hemp, which is a lower content THC plant, which you use to make fabrics and things like that, uh, is legal. So, I mean, I have always imagined that I would dream to enter to that market through the hemp sector and then mm -hmm. just develop the technology, you know, sit and wait there until the legalization will obviously happen in a point and then you are, you have a foot. Actually, there is a fascinating story of a guy. This is, this is such a typical Russian thing uh, in, in the, the good thing. I mean, the good things of Russia. Check out this story. It's really fascinating. Um, uh, and it's a story of entrepreneurship. That, that's why I want to tell it here. Because, because I mean, also in the whole package of this uh, conversation that I'm having with you, it's like, hey, uh, let us put several ideas before I enter to this segue, this mega segue. Uh, the future depends in, on you. So how are you going to act? You know, what, how are you going to act to the current situation that is happening? Depends on you in a great deal. I mean, there are externalities to you, but be creative. Because I was listening to this talk uh, today by by this dude, um, uh, uh, Rally, Ray Dal Dalio from Marco Investment. Ray Dalio, and, yeah. yeah, Ray Dalio from Marco Investment. And, and uh, it was so obvious that, I mean, he said the only way to get us out of this is with, in, with the initiative and, and inventiveness. I mean, the rest are just like kind of, uh, I mean, he was talking about the core problems, so the accessory problems are going to be fixed by by governmental intervention and things like that. But the core problems are going to them, fix them with inventiveness. And Russians are quite inventive. And so um, there was a guy who who was in the um, in a countryside house of his friend, and he was reading a Soviet book uh, about uh, the fact that when you grow hemp in a field. If you grow the year after, uh, what's the name of this, of beetroot? If you grow beetroot the year after on a field of hemp, uh, you will obtain 30% plus yield of, on the beetroot because the mm -hmm. hemp treats the soil in a way that favors the, the growing of beetroot in the year after. So the guy went to a friend. This guy was an investor and the guy went to a friend and uh, who is uh, who had a plantation of beetroot because he had a factory of making uh, sugar of beetroot and he went to a friend and he was like hey man like can we use your fields to make this test i'm going to research all this um and uh, and uh, maybe we can just make a test and stuff all and so he flew to france to the the, the like european growers uh, convention of hemp the european convention of hemp growers and he arrived to france and he said i want to plant 3000 hectares of, of hemp in russia to to give you a reference all France uh, produces 700 hectares of, of hemp. And this is where the classic Russian thing comes. All the Europeans were like, ha ha, you fucking crazy Russian, except, and I, I read the interview of him and he says, everybody laughed in the room except the Chinese. And the Chinese was, we will buy your hemp, no problem. And so he came back to <laughs> Russia. <laughs> he came back to Russia and, uh, lo and you know, long story short, the, the top, the top, um, uh, technologist of this uh, kind of like machinery that you need to process this in France nowadays lives in in the center of Russia in some random farm there because this guy brought him there and nowadays this dude single-handedly produces more hemp than all all France combined you know that's a, such a classic yes, Russian story because Russians yeah. uh, Russians have this uh, I mean this very very wide thinking you know and and when they put themselves in mind something uh, well they really executed. So, so I mean, this segue for me had a value because, uh, well, firstly, I really love to talk about Russia. I really don't get paid by the government to do that. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and I also don't get extra points from my wife to do that. It's just like I, I, I moved to a country that, that gave me a lot of, um, a lot, and I'm very grateful. And that's actually one of the reasons why I decided to make this podcast because everybody sees Russia like as something that is impenetrable, some sort of North Korea thing. And all of a sudden, I found myself here with a with a high level of English, and I was like, "Hey, maybe I can just open that window." So, so, and that, that's one of the reasons why I made the segue. And the second reason why I made the segue is that, well, imagine that person. That's how wealth is created. I mean, what what that means? I mean, that that person saw saw an opportunity. Uh, of course, he was in a position of privilege. Again, these evil capitalists, you know, that they are just there stealing all our money and doing things like that. This person saw an area of opportunity. 
and nowadays employs thousands of people and it's pushing the economy forwards and i guess that once the wealth is destroyed as it's going to be destroyed now uh we are going to be able to recreate this by actions like that just being inventive not waiting for the government to sort your problems out ah well to be fair with this guy he did obtain he he actually obtained a major credit from the government to grow hemp by the way because they were developing the the region but again so elon musk did fair enough that, that that's that's one that's one uh, positive aspect that what just what we were saying of you know government uh, taking action to help the good companies or or the good initiatives that's absolutely fine uh, I mean, it's, it's it's actually healthy for for an economy to work like that. But also to to highlight something and, and to take it to the equivalent of what we were speaking about, what uh, what instruments can the normal uh, guy or a typical guy uh, uh, come into? You mentioned something quite interesting about this guy. Is that he said, "I'm going to do the research before he committed mm -hmm. to something." So mm -hmm. this is key. You need to you, you cannot go into something without yeah. getting at least a little bit of of, of education on the subject. So. Ultimately, uh, if not, it's if you if you get it right, it's just because of luck, and and yes, luck exists, but you want to minimize the the chances of leaving everything to 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 that because obviously you, you want to own as much uh, as much as you can, uh, control of, of of the next steps that you're going to do. So so yes, inventive will be necessary, and there are brilliant minds that will. I'm sure you know humanity has uh, is, is resilient, yeah, and and. And on, until you know that 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 other comment that distinguished the the, the, the dinosaurs comes and uh, comes for us, then chances are that we're going to have more periods like this one, and we're going to come out of it. Now, it's a matter of choosing uh, who are you. So, so if you're an inventive person and you want to get into these things, then then by all means, probably this is the best way, the best time to do it. And then finding the people that wants to take risk alongside you. But if you're not. And uh, you need to be a little bit curious and understand that if you do nothing, doing nothing is the worst thing that you that you can ever do because ultimately yeah. you're gonna you're going you're just going to swing with the current wherever it goes, and then you're going to blame it on on, on everybody and then the only one to blame is yourself. What do you think? What do you think? Going back to this, like, what can a single person do to 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 put their money into their service? In terms of like amounts of actual dollars, maybe this answer is impossible. But what do you think is the minimum amount of dollars that you can invest you can start with i mean it, it depends on it depends on the instrument because uh th this is this is a very good one so for instance if you want to invest in bitcoin yeah you can which, start with which is, with, $1, which is yeah. entirely a possibility so so you can you can divide a bitcoin in in in, a, in in the almost infinitesimal fraction so so you can you can start with very little now what people need to understand is that if you start with little, it's not that you're going to get one million dollars the, the the day after. Of course, no, no, always, always, always. If it happens, it means that you know that that thing grew uh, at an astronomical uh, uh, rate, whatever you invested in. But but if for for a reasonable uh, purpose, so you want to to invest something that you can split into into different buckets of of risk. Because uh, you don't want to go all in. Like if you if you want to go all in on something, rather go and play blackjack uh, at the yeah, casino. Yeah, exactly. You, at least you'll have fun. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but 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 if not, uh, you know, I guess that that it's difficult uh, to, for, for for many people to, to think about that. But if you can spare, I don't know, five hundred dollars, uh, and you can divide it in in, in two three uh, parts, then then certainly you can achieve something. That, that at least will, it will feel right after after one two years. Yeah, you know, I want to read you, I want to re read you the lyrics uh, of a song of mine. Uh, th there will be a reason for that. Uh, once um, I, I need to Google it quickly here. Wait, yes. Uh, and it's very 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 um, apropos, I would say. I once lost something like uh, let's let's not even put the number, but but four digit number uh, on crypto. And okay. uh, and I was um, I was I remember being you know on the click on the moment of the click you know like okay I'm going to do this you know I'm gonna and, I, and my wife asking me are you sure uh, <laughs> and I was like yeah path you know the, the voice of reason <laughs> yes and so I wrote her I wrote her a song that it, it, it's not long it'll, it'll be easy to read it I, I wrote her a song called Learn to Walk Before You Run okay so here is how it goes as I laid beside the road. With my eyes burnt and the crust of my soul frozen solid, I wondered, how did I got here? 
I remember feeling wise and the thought of confidence. And I remember the look in your eyes as you trusted my ways while I started running. It took me long to understand without the right commands, the mind is set to fail. Seek, before, seek for the wiser before you call yourself the master of your story. Learn to walk before you run and know your spectrum of light. Looking straight into your sun may lighten or burn your eyes. Patient drive and inner walks did not give me the results I was hoping today, but defeat means to answer to the seductive thought of time is your enemy. You need to learn, you need to do your stuff. I mean, I'm here out of the song already. You need to learn, you need to do your stuff, you need to be calm, and you need to learn to walk before you run. And uh, That's I... an that's awesome lyric. Uh, congratulations on that one, because it's, it's extremely good advice. That unfortunately, uh, people, will, people will love the song for sure, <laughs> but no one learns from 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 other person's uh, head. So exactly. It's, so we all we all we all do the same mistakes, you know. And and, and oftentimes, our, our our wives or our partners are our best uh, risk managers because they are yeah. not in, in the emotional basket case that we are when we are taking those decisions. Yes. Yet they they also they also are looking for our, our well being. So it's like. And theirs, because obviously, especially if you're if you're married, <laughs> yeah. After all, they, they own fifty percent of you. So, <laughs> do you do you think I'm taking us back radically to the point? Um, do you see a potential of hot war coming or something really really fucked up in the horizon, or are you more calm about things? I mean, perhaps the perspective from England and Russia we can share would be interesting. You mean uh, politically or in general, or still in the economic market sense? No, I'm here more talking about. The whole thing going south very badly. I mean, uh, are you afraid right now? Are you calm? Are you chilled? Uh, no, I, I, I think we're gonna go. We're, we're gonna go much worse, unfortunately. Uh, uh, but, but I am happy to be to be wrong and to admit it if if so, because I don't be want to be yeah. bad. Yeah. So, so what, why uh, why am I saying this? Um, first of all, is nothing is of my own sort of intellectual uh, labor. Uh, it's, it's from the from the pieces of information that I read and, and, and what I filter from, from the sources I, I, I consult uh, most of the time. So, so first of all, what, what it's happening, let, let, let's go bit by bit. We, we said already about the coronavirus and, 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 and what can happen. I, I don't think that, that we will overcome this uh, very shortly. Yes, there are some signs of, re of recovery in, in, in most countries, but it, it, there, there's a chance that, that there's, that there's going to be a second outbreak uh, and, and again, it will it will panic the whole the the whole economy again. Uh, especially, and, and there there are some people speaking about if there is some sort of seasonality aspect to it. Right now, uh, uh, South America is entering the winter, yeah. Uh, and there are chances that it can it can it can be uh, really bad. That that's on, on that side. But on the, again, on the uh, talking on the financial market side, there there's there's a concern growing about the the U.S. dollar. And how it can explode into 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 the stratosphere. I want to say something yeah. that U.S. dollar is seventy percent of the global economy is moved in the U.S. dollar. Just so people can understand how pivotal this is. Yes, yes. And and what what's happened is that again, you remember when we were speaking about how companies were in debt massively, and 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 the, the whole economy was in debt because they were taking money from uh, from the central banks. And then buying all the assets and so on, and that inflated the bubble and 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 got us where we are today. Yeah. So, the world is is uh, pretty much uh, in very high debt of U.S. dollar. So, what happens if if the if the cost of U.S. Uh, if the price of the U.S. dollar goes up, it means that your debt is is far more difficult to repay. And the price of the U.S. dollar would increase because there are less dollars that I can get. I mean. Yes, because people are, are people are. Uh, uh, demanding. So when I say people, is in general companies, other governments, etc., are demanding far more dollars right now because it's safer. And they will, or... they will need it because they need to. They need to satisfy the the, the liabilities. So the, all the debt service that they have, they, they need to pay it with, with US dollar again. And and uh, they were counting on being able to carry on in, in a healthy economy, so to speak. And selling all the products and so on to 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 be able to uh, to to afford and and, and confront these these uh, these payments and these liabilities. So yes, it hasn't happened. So there, there's a there, I was talking about indices. We were talking about the how, how you can invest in indices. There's an index that you know you can invest in it, but it's not. I'm, I'm not saying it uh, uh, as an investment recommendation, but just for the curious one, that's called the dollar index. 
okay. that basically is, is it, it's the value of the U.S. dollar in comparison to uh, a basket of other currencies. And, and you can see how it skyrocketed uh, when this whole thing started. Then it was very volatile and came down again. And right now it's, 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 in, a, it's in a mid-range situation where you can see the tension and it can, it can explode at any time. There, there's another indie, index that is very interesting in this case that it compares it only with the with a basket of the Asian currencies and the emerging market currencies. Uh -huh. If you look at the price of, for instance, the, the, the U.S. dollar against the Brazilian real, the Turkish lira, the Colombian peso, and so on, all of these companies, ha all, I'm sorry, all of these the currencies from these countries have lost value tremendously. Well, in Russia, it's brutal, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this this obviously creates a situation where. Uh, uh, it's not pretty for, 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 for the economy, it's not pretty for, for businesses and for governments. And, and think of this, uh, this, which is one of the, one of the things that, that, that got me really interested. If you see the, the Arab countries that, that, that are mainly oil exporters, and in the situation with the oil markets is terribly bad, most of these countries, they have uh, what's called a, a fixed, uh, fixed arrangement in their currency controls. So in, in the sense, that the value of, of their currency is pegged to the dollar at a fixed amount. Okay. So they don't allow it to fluctuate. But obviously, when there is a massive imbalance in, in, in their national accounts because of the situation with oil, it creates a lot of pressure to, to release these controls. And then the, the mayhem that this can create can, can, can be astonishing. So, so uh, I, uh, again, all of these things uh, uh, fall into probabilistic uh, Yeah, scenarios. but that's really interesting for, for our, the audience uh, of this program to understand that, that, I mean, the price of dollar most likely will rise because, I mean, A, people are spending less and they're keeping it to themselves, right? Yeah. And what would be another reason why this would, what this would happen? Would this be the main reason, right? People are keeping dollars for themselves. It's not a money to be throwing your dollars around. Uh, it's, it's because there's a lot of uh, companies worldwide, that's very big ones, who, who need to keep repaying the, the, the debt service, which has increased because again the price of it's a feedback loop that reinforces itself. Like let's put it let's put it super simplistically. So so your demand falls because people start buying your products. You have to pay your workers because a governments are forcing you to pay your workers to keep them there because I mean if not the economy collapses and b because hey you just don't want to be an asshole so so you have to pay your workers and so obviously this this means that you have to keep your money in place and not and also apart from that you have to pay your debts mm -hmm. so this makes the price of money go up and that creates tensions because for example if you're Russia then your your everything that you import into Russia becomes more expensive, and so this creates tensions in the public domain, uh, and also it creates tensions in countries where, for example, there are their economies are attached to this price, and so they are going to have to relax controls and face themselves in a, find themselves in a situation that is quite messy, and this is when geopolitical instability starts. Cooking, uh, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. And even even for the U.S., it's not it's not that they are the winners of the situation because yes, the, the dollar can gain strength, but that obviously affects their competitive industry because you know everything that they that they sell to the rest of the world. It's more expensive. Sounds very expensive. Something that people need to understand is that when, for example, if the this is very ABC economics, but if the if the currency in Russia uh, becomes cheaper. Um, then it means that buying Russian goods it's cheaper for somebody outside and vice versa. So right now for the US to export something it becomes more expensive and also and so that in one side creates an opportunity right because maybe a, a company that was sourcing some microchips in the USA it's now going to buy it somewhere else because it's cheaper but that contracts the American economy which is etc. So and then the, and then that puts for example imagine it for a second that 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 creates the lobby of microchip makers and nervous and so it pushed congressman x to push for this investigation to be done in saudi arabia and the whole thing ends in some invasion of iranian resources something i mean just he, super jokingly here on explaining how the change of the price of the dollar can end up in a in a hot war conflict in, in a point uh, yeah, this is yeah. not just something that people are going to sit down and watch it all fall apart um, I have a, I have some questions here that I have fixed uh, that, that I wrote before in my research. Um, if I if I may if I may uh -huh. because please, then that please, closes please, the, please. Whole, the whole section yeah. that we were just talking about. 
then one potential investment that anyone can do is simply oh, get great. US dollars. Get to US buy dollars. dollars. Uh huh. To buy dollars. Simple. Yeah, and just put them. Again, no, I'm not recommending it. It's it's a probabilistic thing. Yeah, but sure. again, if you, if you can have something in US dollar and it appreciate massively, even if the whole economy gets fucked, at least you're protected a little bit. So this uh, let's uh, let's get away from this. I mean, conversation of the instruments by recapping it again. I mean, you have peer-to-peer -peer lending. You can contact a broker who will, for you, activate a whole bunch of uh, instruments. Can you repeat the names you said? Like buying stocks. I always forget the other one. The the McDonald's box. <laughs> ETFs, uh, exchange traded funds. Yeah. Uh, you can Carry invest on. in commodities. You can invest in in currencies as well. What are commodities? Uh, uh, like like uh, oil, for example, is a commodity. Old right? oil. And so when I, you, I mean, that doesn't mean that you buy it <laughs> and you put it in your house, but it means that you buy the futures, or or, or what it means when you invest in a commodity. Well, you 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 can you can, and this is this may sound complicated, but it, it isn't that much. So you can enter into a contract with the broker whereby you say, if I am buying oil and the price of, of oil goes up, then the broker pays you. If I'm if buying he, oil? And the price of oil goes up. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. okay. And the broker okay. pays you. So you're not buying oil as in, you know, you're, 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 someone is going to deliver the barrel of oil to your house. <laughs> it's the broker that is saying, fine, we enter into a contract where we say, where we say okay, you're, you are betting against me. Why so, would I don't understand? Why would this? I mean, it seems like, like a very random business. That's I don't know how to even explain it. I mean, uh, why would I bet against it? <laughs> it, 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 it? And you you would be surprised. It's like why people bet in football. I mean, they, is it they, is it comparable? Well, is it comparable? Like betting? I mean, is it a bet for the for the for the adrenaline rush of trying to guess something, or is it a bet? For with some sort of well, economic well, purpose. The, the, the difference between trading the financial markets and betting is how you approach it. I mean, if, if because both things have a, have a tremendously random uh, nature. But then with financial markets, if you are educated and you understand how to read it more or less, you can you can try and and, and put the odds in your favor. But I don't Obviously, mean that. Do I don't mean that. I mean I mean I'm not talking about the randomness of it. I'm talking about the final purpose of my investment. I mean, I maybe I'm seeing it as a, in a very in a very idealistic idealized way, sorry, which is like I want to invest in pot stocks because I believe in pot or I want to invest in in uh, in Elon Musk because uh, I believe in uh, in his companies, whatever. Um, yeah. whereas when I well, you could see it like when you're betting for a horse, you're investing in <laughs> in that horse because you like that horse and or not necessarily because you like it I'm, I'm answering my own question as i go not necessarily because you like it i mean there is no difference really in betting in a horse in betting in a company the difference is just like the horse will run a race the company will make a product and a service no but, but you you said it yourself so so you you may invest in something because you believe in it whereas if you speculate on something you don't you probably don't care what that something is all that you care is that that thing goes up But but then I mean, what? How would it be like? I, I wonder how these things were created. It's like I went to a broker and I told him, "I bet your oil is gonna go up," and the broker is like, "No, it's gonna go down." And then if I win, you pay me money. It's, no, it's it's, it's it's not a negotiation. It's it's not. It's, it's again, it's a platform. You you see the platform and you have two buttons: buy or sell. The broker is willing to give you to quote a price, and this is not a person. Again, it's it's a it's a it's, a, it's an IT platform. Yeah. You see it on your screen, just like when you were buying Bitcoin, Bitcoins, yeah. or, or crypto, or whatever. So the broker is willing to give you two prices, one for buy and one for sell, right? Which means ah, he's, willing to, okay. he's willing to underwrite two contracts, one if you buy and one if you sell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, you, if, you, if you take the buy contract, if you take the blue pill yeah. <laughs> and you take, and you take the, the, the buy contract, then you make money if the price goes in your favor, so if it goes up. I see. And, the broker, and, and the broker pays you when you, when you close the when you close the position which means when you when you when you uh, end the contract you click, you click close what? and and the, and if it's in favor you get paid as simple as that on the other hand if you take the red pill and you say well i want to sell you don't have it it's just a contract you, say, you don't have anything to sell you say you say to the broker i believe this thing will go down and they are willing to underwrite that contract which means if the price goes down you win and so what do i get money you get money 
Well, I promise you, I don't want to get stuck here. I really didn't understood this clearly, and I and I we can stay <laughs> for hours. But but I'm sure that maybe my audience understood it, or maybe we will discuss it better yeah. in another. I apologize if I if I extended too much into that. No, section. no, that's I, great. That's yeah. great. That's great. I want I, I wanted to get this kind of like financial literacy uh, initiative because my wife uh, had this uh, especially here, man. Like here here things have a major externality, which is called Soviet Union, and and all of a sudden you know. Imagine the parents of the people who are here young nowadays, like the, the, the young people here, they never were facing the financial markets in the 60s and 70s or something. I mean, they yeah. were, you know, my, my the father of my wife uh, tells me this story that it's like that they were sitting in the cafeteria of the of the company where they were working. They were working in a company called Mos Energo, which is the company who provides energy for Moscow. And yeah. And uh, and the father of my wife told me this story, which is like they were they were speculating what they will do if the Soviet Union falls. I mean, they were like, oh, what would you do if the Soviet Union falls? And the whole conversation ends in a pause, and then there is a moment which is like, but we know it's never going to fall, so let's continue eating it. You know, <laughs> uh, I mean, there was not an expectation here of of something like that happening, and and so uh, this this creates a consequence in the presence. I mean, there are a lot of conversations that parents have not had with their kids. Uh, because their parents didn't have that experience. Uh, it, it, that includes sexual education, that includes drugs education, uh, that includes financial education too. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's very interesting. I, I, I do have some, some Russian friends, but I know that, that not all of them are very, uh, are very keen to speak about those, those uh, type of things because, again, all, the, all that baggage of information that... Uh, yeah. We are yeah. all shaped by, like, generationally by the, by the past in a way. And, and it's amazing how when you put people from different countries in the same place, you can get so many different uh, opinions and reactions for the same topics. Yet, we, we, and I remember very, very clearly, one of, one of, it's actually a very good phrase of yours in, in, in one interview that you received that says that the world looks far more similar to, in, yeah. in this case, was to Venezuela than, than to England, for instance. Uh, and it's true, there are so, a lot of commonalities, but it's also very interesting the, the, the differences, uh, the very punctual differences that you can find. But, but again, just, just to, and, and again, I want to be very responsible with what I'm saying, with all this thing of investing and trading. Most people end up losing money. So hence, we'll never go into any of these things that we discussed here before right. actually making sure that you understand it. If you don't understand it, just, just keep away. You, you, you probably, if you don't make money, that's fine. But health is more important, especially mental health yeah. is yeah. far more important. You, so, should see it, you should see it perhaps like this. Like, uh, I I um, I'm trying to make a metaphor here. So, and maybe maybe I even eat my own words and don't even go with it with a metaphor. When you if you have if you live by the day, you know, and uh, and uh, every month you have uh, as much money uh, that you need and you don't have anything else, then you shouldn't invest at all. Like you should yeah. only invest things that you are sure that you can lose. Yeah. And you, that's how you exactly. should enter like to the whole thing. Yeah. That's yeah. you should enter to the whole thing and just say. Okay, well, um, but 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 I mean, if you do decide to invest, we reviewed some uh, some uh, instruments that you can use uh, to use to put your excess money that you are ready to lose, a hundred percent. You know, I wanted to ask you something that I heard uh, today that called my attention, which is about yeah. algor algorithms. So, yeah. so um, what people must understand is that well, initially, initially, let's say if you go back fifty years ago. Um, that, or maybe I, I want to precisely go not so far away in time, like something like forty, maybe maybe thirty years ago. You, you look at uh, all this footage of people in the stock exchange with a phone, like calling to a lot of people, and like basically what those those people are doing are making decisions, right? I mean, they they're like, or perhaps they're representing somebody who called them and say, "Make this decision," and the guy is making a decision. But mm -hmm. as computers came into the the horizon, what happens is that computers are making these decisions. It's like, I mean. The, the, I mean, the information comes in. What's the information? Uh, the trade from China went down. Uh, let's put it more, even more specific. Um, and I'm going to use just a very um, fast metaphorical thing. Let's say that that uh, silica, which is the material you need to make some chips, you know, uh, the price of silica yeah. goes high, uh, goes up. And so the computer looks at this and it's like, okay, Apple stocks maybe are going to fall. So sell Apple. Because chips will go more expensive and the production line of Apple will become more expensive. Yeah. And so a computer is making that decision. And so one of the things I heard today is that this is such an abnormal time that perhaps the algorithms that the computers are uh, using in order to trade 
uh, are going to just not work as efficiently as they usually work because the pool of information is absolutely bananas right now. Is this a real yeah, thing? Right. I mean, is this a conversation? Maybe is this a case in which we will kind of humans will take over machine again, or or, or do we have enough trust in those algorithms like to relax and say, well, let's just leave it running as as it was. Well, the thing is that algorithms are not built to to fix things. Algorithms are built to make money based on a set of rules and and again under normal conditions and this is one of the things that 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 happened that and, and contributed massively in the past to to uh, because they acted so quickly in in, in arbitraging so so again buying high sell, sell uh, buying low selling high it's, we, that's what arbitrage means you buy something cheap and you sell it expensive but on so tiny fractions but so large volumes that the profit was was massive and this was possible when things were somewhat uh, uh, when reality was fit for, or when the algorithm was fit to the realities that were happening. Right now, it's, it's irrational all over the place. So it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to, to ascertain uh, what the next move is going to be. And, and this is where the human element uh, comes far more powerful. So, so it's not a matter of, oh, you should shut down your algos. It's a matter of, if you don't do it, you probably lose far more money. So, yeah. so in some cases, they'll just stay out, and when when volatility uh, reduces a little bit, they'll switch and on back. Uh, back so, again. Do, do you think that they're off right now? I mean, I some guess of them are. To, uh -huh, some of them are. Some, yeah. some of them are for sure. Uh, some some you know, there's there's a lot of uh, hedge funds, uh, and and just so people understand what a hedge fund is, it, a hedge fund is basically one uh, uh, type of investment vehicle or one type of company is in essence a company that manage uh, uh, the money from the investors that put the money there and they they typically uh, operate with a mandate that can be a theme like for instance I I, I just uh, we just look for very distorted opportunities and this is where we come in aggressively or so on or they are just trying you know they just don't want to lose people's money and they want to this is why it's called hedge because we try to to, to hedge your to, to protect your money from all of those massive swings that can happen and, mm -hmm. and also profit from them. So there are hedge funds that specialize in in in, in algorithms that is just machines. So it's just you know that they just have a lot of quants that are you know testing models and and sort of predictive patterns uh, in in the in the in the prices of the of the assets they invest and and they and and they go. But not all of them have been profitable in this in this space. Some of them ha have even broken altogether so some of them of course are, are off some of them are just tweaking and some of them probably are making more money than ever because uh, uh, you know I know for instance one that has a one algorithmic uh, solution for Bitcoin that uh, it stays out of the market whenever the price goes down and it only plays in whenever he spots a pattern that they believe can be sustainable. Yeah, the question the is the question is what happens if that pattern is, uh, I mean, deceives the algorithm, not because somebody's trying to deceive it, even though there are the so-called whales who can deceive yeah. patterns. Uh, whales are those big players, you know, on the Bitcoin, Bitcoin world. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm sure this works. I don't want to say anything against it. I'm just saying that when it goes down is because, well, the pattern like now, I mean, who could predict this pattern and then the algorithm is just designed to make one task, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and then it's like, uh, coronavirus, uh, okay. Which is why the technology in general is passive. And it's exactly the same thing with like the, the, the cars. Like, you know, I, I, I have a cousin who is very uh, passionate about technology in general and innovation, mm -hmm. uh, as we all can be. But I, I was I was thinking like you know probably the the thing with the autopilot and the and, and self uh, the driverless cars yes if you go to the U S it makes total sense <laughs> because everything in the U S is like this yeah yeah but put that thing in central London or put that thing in Caracas yeah you think that it will ever work with if some if some kid comes with their bicycle or or, or just to clean the the the, the windows so you know it, it will not take those 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 things into it will I not, tell it you I tell you in. I tell you a funny thing. There is a gigantic company here called Yandex. Uh, it's the, by the way, it's the biggest internet company in Europe. I mean, because yeah. that's how big Russia is. And yeah, uh, I know. It. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and they are testing their self-driving cars in Moscow. And I purposefully threw my car to it, like erratically. <laughs> I mean, I was driving. I was like, works. okay, okay, I'm gonna fuck. I mean, I'm gonna fuck with this algorithm stuff. And uh, I mean, but I don't know. There was a there was a person there on the helm. So, but it was just funny. I was like. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to race to get a crash just to, to, to test the algorithm. And then I thought, if I can help it improve, that's also a positive thing. 
Um, but yeah, probably you can sue them and win as well. But I'm with you there. You know, man, I have never understood this drive to produce. It, maybe I'm too conservative in that sense, but I have never understood this drive of producer, like an intelligent machine or something like that. I mean, I just find it uh, cold and, and far away from us as individuals. But but of course, I mean, whoever is uh, into this robotics and, and development. I, have you seen this footage of this uh, robot dog patrolling? It's very famous. It went viral, like this robot dog patrolling the streets uh in um in the patrolling the park in indonesia or something i will put it to you on twitter uh, actually okay. actually for the you're not gonna be able to see it now but for the audience uh I'm, I, the audience are, are gonna be able to see it uh because the important thing when you see the video later uh you're gonna see the fear of people man and it's just a freaking patrolling uh park Wait, let me see if I can find it quickly. Uh, yeah, it's in Singapore. It's in Singapore, man. It's it's. You will see it later. I mean, again, right now you're not going to see it, but our audience is going to be able to see it. And it's just it. What is interesting is the the fear of people. Like, I think this is where. Yeah, man. It's just the fear of people. Like, is, like, like what the hell is that? <laughs> I mean, is this this dog? Is this dog kind of kind of? Uh, wait a minute. I got some inter some because I really I really. Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I would love you guys to see this because it's really crazy. Like, so this this robot dog is there patrolling the streets, uh, uh, not the streets. It's just uh, inviting people to do social distancing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, but this is not well. Anyways, I'll put it on the description. Uh, it's not the video okay. I wanted to see. And and so and so, but the reaction of people is are priceless. I mean, people are. There are like some grandmas who all of a sudden see this thing coming to them and they're like, oh my God, like <laughs> there is a robot. I mean, really, our reaction to these things are not, not so transparent and, and, and smooth. I'm looking and... forward to seeing a reaction video. Yeah, you will see it. Like, I mean, there is, a, there is a grandma, you're sitting there and she just goes into automatic panic and the whole thing looks supposedly in, in, in conspicuous. But, but anyways, I mean, that's a segue, but... but right. But I mean, this uh, we need to understand. Well, I, I, I'm actually I'm against calling anything that we are using right now artificial intelligence. It's a super overpriced word. Like I mean, this Google software that recognizes your voice. It's just yeah. a freaking. Buzzword. It's a. It's it's just a freaking uh, Excel table with a audio recognition software. It's like this phoneme <laughs> means that. I mean, that's not artificial intelligence at all. Uh, and 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 a robot that can navigate on some sort of park or something uh, it's also not our navigate i mean it's just a navigational system but but anyways uh, I'm, I'm glad that we could talk about algorithms and that people can understand uh, i just want to like i'm going to repeat it again because i really think want people to take this concept home nowadays a lot of the decisions financial decisions that are being made are happening by computers that are analyzing the data that is incoming as i said there is a price of a microchip in in you see because i specifically use the example because there is a raw good raw material or maybe the algorithm reads a news because it can also have a text detection and the news could be a uh, rare earth mine in china booms and that 100 workers died uh, and so there is expectation that this material is going to go up and then the algorithm makes a decision i wouldn't call it an artificial intelligence algorithm it's just a uh, algorithm uh, and these things makes a lot of the mathematical of the financial decisions of our day and uh, i was uh, curious if if this could uh, affect the current situation because of the rarity of the situation but eduardo tells us that this most likely are things that are switched off or i mean things that are not active at the moment um i, I want to go uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I want, yeah some of them I, I want to i want to go go to somewhere which is the um, supply chains i mean um by the way, another parallel thing here. How crazy it is that Donald Trump has so much influence in all of this. I'm really not like a like a Donald Trump is the end of the world kind of guy. I don't like the guy, but anyways, it's just really crazy that all of a sudden we have... I mean, nobody could have predicted coronavirus and the fact that Donald Trump will have so much influence in the whole uh, outcome of the whole thing. Um, but I'm going into there because I want to talk about globalization because because yeah. um, Donald Trump has been uh, a president that is on, 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 in American standards a bit of an isolationist. I mean, just a bit more retracting. And it started some sort of confrontation with China before uh, all of this went loose. And now we have a situation in which capital people who possess the capital most likely are going to favor solutions that are more local and less global. And there are favorable solutions that are especially not involved with China. 
Is this a real thing? Do you think that the future looks less globalized than before? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can ha see it's, it's, a, it's also a cyclical thing. The, the problem with uh, globalization is that it, it has so many aspects and people look at it from such a romantic point of view that, yeah. that, that it, it takes them away from, from some of the uh, key elements. And, and, and it's like, look, again, I'm not going to speak, you know, wonders of Donald Trump. Uh, I don't live in the U.S. I understand, obviously, that the guy uh, uh, says some things that he shouldn't and, and probably behaves in a way that, that he shouldn't as, some of the times as well. But, but look, I, 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 do, I do understand why he's there. And, 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 I, and I think he's necessary to, to an extent, even though many people will hate me for it. Why? Uh, because if you are a factory worker in, I don't know, in Alabama or something like that, and, and you've never gone out of the U.S. and, and you've always seen your four, your four walls and, or you go, you go to work, you have your family, you're a decent man, you're a decent worker, you just want to work for your family. And then all of a sudden everything comes from, from wherever else, the factory shuts down. And I'm not saying that that, that that dynamic is wrong per se, but if you sit in, in, in his chair, if you stand in his shoes, you will feel like, you know, things are not, globalization is not working for him. Yeah. So, well, well, you can buy his goods cheaper. Yeah, but the, the, the whole town was living out of that factory, which is now closed. So if, you, if you're a president, obviously you want to accommodate for the, for the best for the entire country. And that means that, unfortunately, it, it's, a, it's a line where some people win and some people lose, and, so, and very few people can mobilize from one to the other. So, so it, it, and, and even outside the U.S., you have the, the situation with Brexit, where there's a lot of people, and it's amazing how many of my friends are so, you know, oh, this is the doom, it's impossible, what's going to happen? Whereas I'm like, I, I switched sides. I, I was very yeah. much um, pro-European Union until I started, wait a second, let me just read a bit more. And, and, and understood that the European Union is like the Titanic. It's just it's 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 it, it's done its job from the from from the post war war era, but is exactly. you cannot have a family of five, and then dress them all with the exact same trousers. It's a tower. It's a tower of vowel problem. I mean, it's a tower yeah. of vowel problem. Just too many languages, too little center. Uh, I mean, too little. Uh, there is not a cultural pull really. I mean, I've been I've been reading the tweets. Like because I follow the like the European Commissioner press and things like that, and I've been reading their tweets. Like, I am both German and European. It's like, but but what does that mean? I mean, for, uh, for example, well, you've, speaking, you've always been. I mean, Europe is a continent. It's like yeah, you know, but I mean, I mean, does that mean that I am Russian and Asian? I mean, I I, I understand <laughs> or, or Venezuelan and Latin American. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, we are. I understand that, but if for some reason, in the European context, because it's it was a feudalist system. Four, five, seven hundred years ago, that 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 evolved into what it is now. The regional differences are so close. I mean, things that are so close are yet so different. When I, it's so funny. Russians. Uh, one of the things that is very characteristic of Russians is that they talk about Europe like like Europe. You know, like like I mean, as if Portuguese guys are the same as as uh, Greek guys are the same as uh, Hungarian guys. And so, um, I absolutely resonate with what you're saying. I mean, for me, for me, the the um, it's just like that there was this i guess that the second world war you know generated such a reaction in everybody uh i mean just sometimes i try to imagine the twitter feed of the times i mean there were 23 million people who died in russia 23 like there it's it's unparalleled like the, the 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 most bloody battle in the history of humanity was the battle of stalingrad and 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 i mean and, and that battle ha happened in the span of those four years and and so Everything that is against the Second World War, which is something like the unity of Europe, you know, it's something that generates a very, very automatic, positive reaction of people. And I think we all, I mean, and here I'm speaking specifically you and me as non-Europeans, uh, yeah. we all fell for that romantic, you know, feel. But when I see, by the way, and this is this drives me to another question, when I see a half a billion euro package, I mean, of recovery package from the European Union, uh, I laugh. I mean, what are you gonna do with half a billion euros in in Europe? And that's uh, that's nothing. I mean, in the sense that Absolutely that that's nothing. that's obviously a body that has not the power to to really drive the continent somewhere yet is acting as if. Uh, and 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 same with Brexit. It's really remarkable. I mean, I I I, I in a certain way, 
and I and I know we're gonna lose a lot of friends for this. It's very, very amazing because because I mean right now the whole debate in between the right and the left has completely flipped and the the, the authoritarian types have become the lefts when you come with a kind of like right leaning yeah. idea. I mean you're just absolutely rendered Nazi instantaneously and it's like wow yeah. but but, <laughs> but I mean maybe maybe it's better, you know, to make things more local and, and, and more and more focus on the people you know. What is and, there and, you know, it will happen again. So, so it's it's sometimes these cyclical events cannot be avoided. So, so we were local once, then we became more global, then we became local again, yeah. and then we become global again because this, you know, the, the, all of those swings are present in in nature in general. Yes. So, so the, the thing is that uh, uh, people tend to to simplify things well too much on the one hand, and on the other, people tend to 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 want to be opinionated about about things that they don't just couldn't understand less. I mean, but, that, but that's kind of okay. I mean, in the sense that I consider myself that I have an opinion. I mean, I, I love to think, and, and I don't think I'm an authority on anything. But I'm really happy for people to have their other point of view, and I'm not going to. And, that, and that's, that's okay. the I don't, problem. I don't, exactly. have a, I don't have a problem with, with people yeah, yeah. saying something. I'm not but, implying but that. Start, yeah. But if you if you start an argument, for instance, and, and, and this is to, to the first point I was mentioning, because for some people it's like, oh, but but if we are not uh, uh, more like a globalist uh, uh, sort of nation then that means that we're going we're going to go to war with everyone it's like no no i mean you can still you can still trade you can still travel certainly you can still do a lot of things it's just you know, there will be some different processes that you know that there or probably they, they there will be some restrictions but not for everybody so so and, and some of the restrictions are, are, are necessary even if you call yourself a globalist yeah it's just it, it's just how it is but but then you know people get very very passionate about those those things and they start mixing concepts and and you know it's it's very difficult so sometimes look I I've learned to to, to shut my mouth whenever something is beyond my reach of, of understanding it until I you know let, let me just take a step back see if I understand it correctly and then I'll be in a position to 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 come again with with some opinion because otherwise it, it will be just noise and there and, is. And, there is a confusion with the word compassion, and uh, the word compassion can go too far, and that's something that people don't understand. And I give you a great example: if I would bring a homeless guy to my home, I mean, I mean, I, that would be could could produce a very f wonderful situation in which in which a friendship, you know, is established, and uh, I opt offer protection to somebody. But a most of the people who will called you a Nazi because you're not a globalist will not bring a homeless person to their home because there is a certain place where their 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 limit starts you know and and that's applies to countries too that doesn't mean yeah. that you necessarily have to be open for everybody and and um, and the other thing is that in some senses we have created a very unnatural economy and I mean in, in uh, because because for example I, I, I mean I, I would like to be able to eat pineapples every moment of the year but this kind of event uh, puts us in perspective of, of what are the things that really matter and, uh, and perhaps putting a strain on the economy, on the environment, on the global you know, web is maybe not worth my desire to have pineapples. And well, the market is what decides that, I think. But, but you also, as a, well, you are the market as a consumer, so you can just... For example, by seasonal, and I have seen this kind of movements in the UK, and in a way, this is an anti-globalization movement. You know, it's like st stop the extreme trade of fruit and and vegetables around the world. And I guess that my, now my main question is like, do you think that because I don't think that capital follows any kind of ethical principles? I mean, in the sense that, or well, maybe, why should it? Why should it? But do you think that capitalists? Uh, but but I do think that capitalists maybe are going to follow the secure uh, production line now because we were taught a very hard lesson to learn i mean if if those masks uh n95 what's the name is the name of them like i don't remember the yeah the, the ones yeah i i understand which one i mean if they were not be making in in china i mean perhaps uh, less people in spain would have died and and i mean maybe the market is going to start to make some decisions of that sort uh, again so so this may sound uh, uh, very bad for some. And when I say that, why should capitalism have a, a ethical considerations? Is that similar to what we were saying about banks? That people say, "Oh, banks are bad." It's like, you know, ultimately, this is people taking decisions, human beings. So, 
some people will decide to allocate resources to, to where they believe either they will get more return or, or they will make a greater good or so on. So what, what, I, what I suggest, or not what I suggest, I'm, I'm, I'm in no position to suggest, but I, what I believe it should happen is that, you know, if someone believes that something is completely wrong and they should do otherwise, just, just, just fucking go and do it. Yes. And, and lead, 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 lead with the example. Don't, don't tell ev- everyone else what, what should be done so that you feel good with yourself and your opinion. I mean, we, we, we all have, obviously you say, well, but I don't have the, 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 the firepower that, uh, I don't know, again, Richard Branson may have. So, okay, but, you know, do you think that, that the Richard Branson was, you know, just there made like this, or now you have $4 billion and, and no, I mean, th- th- there was a process. There was, you know, he took some risks. He convinced some people. He had to work hard for it. Yes. Even if he, he was born with a silver spoon, I mean, it, it, that, that's not the point. Uh, because you can you can very well lose it. You can, yeah. you can very well come from from hero to zero, and yeah. and and that that can will happen. So so I do think again that there will be a, a, a redefinition in the way uh, uh, the world trades, and and some of the things again that the trust be, between certain countries. I think that for instance, I, I don't think that people will stop buying from each other uh, a lot of things, and I don't think that globalization is going to end completely. I think that that some of the aspects of globalization. Will, will be very much affected. Some of the things, uh, especially because now you will have to prioritize a lot of vulnerable people at home uh, in, in, inside the borders. You will need to kind of give some stimulus to, to, to develop uh, more products uh, in-house. But that will only uh, be possible if, if the consumers are willing to take the ship. Just like you said, you would like to eat pineapples every, every month of the year. But, but, you know, if, if as a group, because ultimately it, it doesn't come yeah. from, from someone telling you you should do it. If as a group people, people are conscious about it and say, well, you know what, you know, as a society, as a, as a, as a, as a close group of, in your case in Russia or, or here, for instance, in, in London, then I am not going to take uh, as much public transport as before because it, it, everything sure. gets congested and, and, you know, with all these viruses. Now, so I'm, I'm going to ride my bicycle much more. So only if, if there is a, a, a change of consciousness in, in those groups, then the, the, the sort of more local movements will take, will take far more place. And but for instance, that, I, uh-huh. I, yeah, mm-hmm. and sorry, I, that, I was just going to finalize the, the, the sentence by saying that I, what I think is, is there will be a probably less interaction with China. So mm-hmm. China, I think it could be a big loser in this, in, in, in this battle. Uh, uh, and, and some of the surrounding countries from China would take this opportunity to, to sell sure. to, to, to the bigger ones. Uh, unless, the, uh, again, they pull the, the strings correctly in the, in the political sense, especially with the U.S., uh, because these are the two superpowers that are probably uh, ruling everything at the moment. And that's where the dance in the South China Sea is going to become more interesting. Yeah. So, man, Absolutely. So, my bro, we have done two hours. I have to kind of uh, move on with my day. It's been a remarkable conversation i'm extremely happy i want to invite and that's amazing because i mean we're gonna have you again so we're gonna have a lot of conversations here uh that i just want to have some regular guests and i started with you uh and daniel because i am pretty sure that we're gonna be back discussing many things i want to remember everybody to go to the podcast trading and serio if you speak spanish uh, and if you speak any language uh in between italian spanish and english uh give a follow to eduardo gavotti on twitter his handle will be on the description of this video uh, i'm really 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 excited of having talked to you and i just like i just hope that that we can continue building bridges and establishing more connections all over the world so we can push uh, reality to a new level and uh and well man my the dream of everybody is that this uh, lockdown uh, will work as some sort of meditation process for everybody to kind of reevaluate things um sometimes i'm very hopeful sometimes i'm very uh, negative but but well i mean no i'm never negative and we joke that i'm some sort of kind of like low labrador retriever kind of soul you know um i don't think i am i mean i think that i'm just aware of the catastrophes that humanity has experienced in the past and that we have pulled through man we have always pulled through and we're obviously gonna do that yeah yeah and thank you so much for doing this leo I, i've thoroughly enjoyed it and uh i'd be happy to do it anytime soon, soon again and so we will uh, take good care enjoy the beautiful city of london and uh stay socially distancing from everybody <laughs> for me this is a catastrophe i don't know how you are about hugging people and stuff but i'm like <laughs> i'm like 
Ah, this is my <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> but anyways, right. we have to we have to take care of our most vulnerable and just be good citizens. So let's keep doing that. Indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Take, good, take good care, man. Bye bye.